Hello and welcome. My name is Donna Xie and I'm an admission counselor here at Pitzer. Uh, and I would like to welcome all of you all, students and parents or family members to our college co-pilot program. Today's session is specifically brought to you for uh, those college co-pilots who will be helping your student navigate the next four years um, and in the next week to help decide on those final choices on whether Pitzer is the right choice for you. Uh, today, we are starting off with a student life panel, um, and we have a couple of current students here to help answer questions that you may have. You can use the Q&A box on the bottom of your screen to pose any questions that you have for the students. After that, we have a virtual tour, uh, which we will be bringing a new format, a video format. So even if you've been on a virtual tour and you want to see Pitzer through a new lens, we have a 360 video uh, that we're about to bring for you guys. Um, and that will help showcase what Pitzer is currently looking like. Uh, and then after that, we have a faculty panel. Uh, we have four wonderful professors who will be joining us um, and to share about what the Pitzer classroom looks like, uh, what is it like to teach at Pitzer, um, and what their favorite things at Pitzer are. Uh, and then ending um, our session today, we have two programs, a virtual lobby for with admission staff and a virtual lobby with financial aid staff. So if you have any last minute lingering questions, uh, you can hop into those lobbies and we'll share the links uh, for that. It's posted on our website, but we'll also repost it in the chat box at the end of the faculty panel. And on that note, we're gonna start off the student life panel and I'm gonna invite our students onto the stage with me. All right, Kayla and Olivia, take it away. So hello, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today for our student life panel. Um, so we have a couple of things just to make sure that we're keeping everything organized. If you have any questions that you would like to ask our panelists, please make sure that you're using the Q&A feature at the bottom of your Zoom screen. We're gonna be sending links through that or answering any sorts of questions that maybe the panelists may not be able to answer or have available. So we're gonna be using that. And we're just gonna get started with introductions. My name is Kayla, I use she, her pronouns. I am a junior at Pitzer. I am a self-design major in foreign language education and I'm a part of the Student Senate as well as the Black Student Union Identity Board and I work in the Office of Admissions. So Olivia, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure, I am also a junior at Pitzer. I use she, they pronouns. I'm a double major in media studies and then a self-design major in performance studies. Uh, outside of working in the Office of Admission, I'm also a part of Pitzer Advocates for Survivors of Sexual Assault, as well as on the roller derby team when we're on campus, which is a lot of fun. Milena? Hi everyone, I'm Milena. I use her pronouns. I'm also a junior at Pitzer. Um, I'm majoring in organizational studies and minoring in anthropology with an overall concentration in urban studies. I am from New York City, so I definitely experienced the coast to coast transition that I'm happy to talk about. Um, and I'm, I'm not a tour guide at admissions or in my classes. I'm also in a couple of spaces. So I'm on identity board with Kayla. I'm also part of APAC and WALL, which is our women of color affinity group on campus, as well as being a part of student senate on the campus aesthetics committee. Um, I'm also on the COVID task force and an orientation adventure leader. Hi, y'all. My name is Kaylee, and I'm from Dallas, Texas. My pronouns are she, hers, and I am a senior at Pitzer. Um, I major in political studies with an emphasis in food justice and food policy. Um, outside of my work in the admissions office, I also was a leader for the Green Monday initiative on our campus to improve um, our dining hall sustainability. I also led a club called Claremont Students for Animals. It's an animal advocacy club for students at the Claremont Colleges. And I studied abroad um, in Rwanda, doing a program in post-genocide restoration and peace building, as well as also singing in the Pomona College Choir. Hi, everyone. I'm Jackson. I'm currently a senior as well. I use he, him pronouns. Uh, I'm a science management major, which is just a fancy way of saying economics and whatever science you want to do. I chose environmental um, management. Um, what are the things I'm a part of? Uh, I'm part of the longstanding improv troupe on campus without a box, um, intramural frisbee, 5C surf club, comic book community club, and I'm an admissions fellow. Oh, and I studied abroad in Singapore. 
Um, hi, everyone. I'm Stella. I use pronouns she, her, hers. I'm also a senior at Pitzer, and I major in combined organizational studies and psychology with a concentration in data science. And I am an international student coming from Shanghai, China. Uh, so I did not choose study abroad because I'm technically already studying abroad-ish in the U.S. So I did a domestic exchange in Sarah Lawrence College in upstate New York. Thank you. Thank you guys so much for being here. I'm excited to talk to all of you. Uh, so we're going to start with just a very simple question of why did you choose Pitzer? So Kaylee, do you want to start? Yeah, yeah. Um, so for me, I was really set on, first of all, on coming to Southern California. I wanted um, a new experience outside of Texas. I've lived there forever. Um, but I cannot do cold weather. So I wanted to stay in the heat. Um, so Southern California was perfect. Um, and I knew that I wanted a small school where there were a lot of discussion based classes. Um, but there's a lot of schools that have those things. So what specifically drew me to Pitzer um, were, were the core values um, and the fact that the, the students, the administration, um, the institution as a whole made this formal commitment to these values that are really important to me. Um, and that um, because of that formal commitment, um, everybody at the school is so passionate about something. Um, they're passionate about wildly different things. Um, and, and they're all really excited to share those passions. So it's just a community of folks who are like constantly pushing each other um, to um, really hold those, those core values and to just be better community members. Yeah, I can also share. Um, I actually toured over 35 colleges, which I always like to share. Um, and then I ended up eating to Pitzer just because I really fell in love with the place, specifically the leadership component and just how you get to be a true leader in all its forms, which I think is really special and you really matter on campus. I think a lot of colleges, you're just um, like one of many numbers, but I think what's really nice about Pitzer is you are a real person and we chose you for a reason. And um, I kind of felt like I had to come also to kind of like spread my light in the community as well, because I knew it was going to be valued, um, as well as being a part of the consortium, I think is really cool that you get all of the resources from the other colleges, but it's really nice to find which one you want to call home. Um, and I think the last thing I always like to say is that you get to really choose your identity. It's not chosen for you and that you're bringing your whole self to the table and you're never like pressured to do anything you don't want to do or like to conform to anyone, but you're really just like on the journey um, and having people support you along that path. Okay, thank you for sharing. So the next question is, what is your favorite thing about Pitzer? We're gonna go to Stella for this one. Yeah, so one of my favorite things is definitely the close relationship with the professor. Um, so one of the things I always love to talk to people is like, I can FaceTime my advisor right now. If she's free, she's definitely gonna pick it up and just chit chat or if I have any questions. Uh, I sometimes FaceTime my advisor when I have like, when I'm just super, super overwhelmed and she will calm me down. So I think that very specific and very intimate relationship is hard to find in other liberal arts colleges, not even to mention bigger universities. And they can also always have have one-on-one -on -one research opportunities uh, with a consortium with their professors as well. I, it's kind of a cheesy answer, but I really, really love the people at Pitzer. Um, like, I think each, each Pitzer student is really like, you know, individualistic in their own way. And they've got some, some piece of them, some cog in their internal machine that really identifies and resonates with the five core values. And it's, it's really fun. And honestly, just really entertaining getting to know people and finding out like, what's that, you know, cog, what makes them tick and getting to know them. Like, I think pretty much across the board, like Pitzer students are very like creative, nice, compassionate, um, eclectic, like there's, they're just great. Like I, I that's like the one thing, maybe it's just because we're virtual now, but like when I think back, like what's one thing that I really, really, really miss about Pitzer? It's like seeing all the people. I'm also an extrovert, so maybe that's a little, little green of salt with that, but it's true. Yeah, I think that's a great point, but I think a lot of people at Pitzer are extroverts, but there's also places for introverts to go as well. Uh, kind of building off that, you mentioned being online, so I just wanted to ask, like, how has been being online, how has Pitzer handled that tra tra transition? Milena, do you want to start? 
Sure. I love this question. Um, I always like to say, which I think is really true, that last semester was my favorite academic semester of college. But now, I don't know, because I'm really enjoying this one too, so it's really a toss up. Um, but I really enjoyed Zoom school. Like I cannot talk enough about it. I have never been so involved on campus than I was this year, because I can make it to every meeting. I want to go to um, and we still do have a very active like virtual campus and that we have tons of committees you can join student senate is super active all of our affinity groups are meeting so with that you really get that sense of community as well um, and again kind of piggybacking off of stella and just the great relationships we have with our professors all my classes have been super small and that is usually very common for all of our students and that one of my classes this semester is eight students and so we're all really um, close and there's a tight bond and we all text each other and I actually found my sweet mate for next year over zoom like so I think that just proves that it can work if you put your mind to it. Um, I think like what's also really special is that the professors really care about you outside the classroom too. Um, and that one of my professors actually like sent us letters in the mail with little quotes and tea bags for us to have. And then we all drink tea over Zoom. So I think like the world is your oyster over Zoom and with a positive attitude, um, it can be really cool. And I've had a great time. I will jump in to, and answer this as well. Um, I think I've had a slightly different experience than Valaine that Zoom school has honestly been really hard for me. Um, particularly last semester was really difficult. Um, I was taking four classes and it was my first semester ever doing any kind of online school. Um, and I, I think I was also trying to apply for, for post-grad opportunities um, because I'm a, I'm a senior. Um, so all of that kind of compounding and dealing with you know, a, a pandemic. Um, but I think what I have really enjoyed and what this has highlighted for me is just the, the amount of support at Pitzer for me. Um, because it was such a difficult time, um, I really had to lean on the support network that I've built over the last four years. Um, and I was able to do that. Um, the students and the faculty organized a, um, like a mental health forum last semester, which was so helpful for me personally, um, because it was just like two hours of students and professors on Zoom together, just talking truthfully about how they're feeling and how overwhelming everything is right now with everything going on in the world and in school. And, um, and, and that was just, it was really validating and really, really affirming for me that, you know, you're not alone in this and hey, you're, professors are here to help you like you know they they want to watch you succeed um and they're also struggling too they're also people <laughs> um who are who are you know in in the same storm that we're in um so so though it was it was difficult i think again it was just um a reiteration of how supportive this community is thank you all for sharing the two different sides of like how online school has been going for everyone um, moving on from that, there is a question in the Q&A feature that is, what are research opportunities like? Are they available for non-STEM majors? Stella, do you have experience with research? I hear you said Yes, um, but I would say I recently just changed psychology to be a STEM major, so that may be a little bit different, but I just want to say I am a research assistant in the Global Mental Health Lab led by Professor Marcus Rodriguez. If you're interested in that lab, you can just Google that and pop up our website. Um, so I first did not have any classes with the professor uh, Marcus Rodriguez, and I was just interested in a topic he researched in. So I just jump on his office hours and we have a couple of meetings. I express my interest and I was like, hey, can I be part of your lab? And he's super welcoming. So I feel like for research opportunities, you don't have to necessarily only look for email announcements. You know, sometimes professor will be like, hey, I'm recruiting for RAs. But if you took that being more proactive and just talk to professors that you like, or you may not necessarily know him, but just jump on his or her office hours and opportunities will come that way as well. So with that said, I feel like there are a lot of opportunities even for non-STEM majors. I know people who did research for anthropology and sociology throughout the semester and in the summer as well. And usually they uh, would be paid throughout the summer. I also have done non-STEM research. So I worked with a linguistics professor um, who I had a class with and I was helping her collect data for her book, which was on uh, language and gender in Disney and Pixar films. So that was a lot of fun. Um, 
and yeah, as Stella said, there are lots of opportunities for research. Like some of it comes very naturally just from being in a course with the professor. Um, and so like I, my final paper for her course happened to be very similar to the research she was doing. And she was like, do you want to continue to do this and get paid? And I was like, absolutely. Uh, so you definitely get things like that. And there are more formal like email announcements, job postings, things like that. There are lots of opportunities for research, especially because we're an all undergrad institution. So professors need us. Uh, on kind of a different topic, we have a question, which is, do students from the five C's stereotype each other by which colleges they attend? Uh, Jackson, do you want to start? Yeah, this is, a, this is a great question, by the way. I don't think I've ever been asked it, but um, I think students try personally, whenever I meet someone new and they ask me what school I go to, I always ask them, what school do you think I go, I go to? And I've gotten every single school except for Scripps. Um, granted, the one time I did get Harvey Mudd, I was wearing glasses. But I think just, it, I mean, if I wasn't wearing the shirt, which is a dead giveaway that I go to Pitzer, like students try and sometimes people will kind of fit with the, within stereotypes, but it's also like, not necessarily as, as maybe I show. <laughs> okay, thank you for that. So we have another question that is related to being bi-coastal. So I'm gonna send this to Milena and to Kaylee. Um, so could you share a little bit about your experience going from where you were to um, Claremont, California and talk about like what you've done during the summer as well? Yeah, I can start us off. So I am from New York City um, and it's been a really smooth transition transition for me. I actually really didn't want to go to college in California when I was like starting my search, but then my uh, college advisor suggested I look at Pitzer and the consortium. So I did. And then I was like, oh, I love it. And I want to go here. Um, so I definitely came to Pitzer for the college and not for the weather. Winter is my favorite season. So I do miss the snow. Although as you can see in Jackson's photo, we do get some snow on Mount Baldy, which is always fun. Um, but it's been really smooth. We do have a lot of New Yorkers and just East Coasters coming to the consortium, so you definitely don't feel like you're alone. Um, specifically with like flights, we do have Ontario Airport, which is an airport nearby, and there's only one flight that goes direct to JFK, and it's a red eye flight. So the whole consortium, um, who like lives in the um, like New York area, will go on that plane. So it often feels like a private plane, and then I'm always sitting between like a Harvey Mudd student and a CMC student, so never alone. We always carpool together. I made a lot of friends through that, um, so that's been really smooth. Also like the time difference, my parents and I were curious to see like how that would affect our relationship. And I think it's actually like made us a lot closer. Like it has not been an issue at all. Um, I did spend like the first semester in New York and that was also fine. Um, I actually had a perfect view of the sunrise every morning from my dorm window last year. So I'd wake up at 5.30 in the morning to watch the sunrise and do homework and there's 8.30 for them. So it was perfect. And I would call them and catch up. So it's really easy to stay in touch. And there is definitely a culture shock in that People in California are much friendlier than New York. Like they want to be your friend. They want to interact. Um, they do wave back to you, which is really exciting. Um, so I think it's a lot easier to transition from the East Coast to the West Coast as opposed to vice versa. Yeah, um, so I'm from Texas. And I think actually the transition was, it, it, was, it was a little rough in the beginning. I think mainly because um, I didn't realize how much I was going to miss home and just being so far away. Um, and I think it, it like set in once I got to campus, like, oh, you are 1500 miles from your home and from anyone that you know. Um, and I actually did go home early um, for Thanksgiving break my first semester because I was just missing my dogs so much. <laughs> um, but throughout the, the following semesters, it's gotten a lot easier, um, particularly as I started joining clubs, joining activities on campus, I kind of like started to find my community, my people to you know, recreate that sense of home um, here. And um, I think, you know, um, uh, cultural shock wise, it was not, it was not much of a transition for me. Um, I think there was, there, it was, it was a little bit, um, I guess my positionality in the community changed a little bit. Um, so I, you know, thought that I knew a lot about diversity and I thought that I knew a lot about um, different perspectives and intercultural understanding. I thought I was very well versed in that, um, particularly being a black woman at a predominantly white institution in Dallas, Texas. I was like, I know I got this. Um, and then I came to Pitzer and realized, oh, I'm now learning with international students who have a totally different perspective that I've never experienced before. And I'm now talking to black folks who are from New York and to folks who are from all over the country that I had never interacted with. And so I think that 
that was, you know, a readjustment for me, um, but in a great way. Everybody was really willing to, to push me um, to, to grow and to learn in that sense. Also, I can add to this as well. I'm from Atlanta and I would say the biggest, I'm sorry, you can hear my dog. She's recording a soundtrack right now, but um, it's a little bit different, like coming from Atlanta to Claremont and in the sense of like things that I miss were more so like the food and like the Southern culture, if you will, like Southern hospitality. Um, and it's a little bit similar in California, but like, it's just not the same. Um, so like sometimes I would call my mom and she's like, do you want me to send you something? I can like, I can send you a can of collard greens or something. It kind of just depended on like what I wanted. Um, and she was always like wanting to be able to be there for me, but like, it was not like a sad experience. It was just like growing up and like going into adulthood. So I would say that's like kind of what my experience is like. Another question we have is what is social life like? Do the students socialize with students at the other Claremont schools? Stella, do you wanna start? Yeah, I would say students, of course, socialize with people from other colleges. First of all, we got shared dining hall before the pandemic. So you can easily meet new friends by eating at other dining halls. And there's so many Claremont colleges uh, students clubs. So Pittsburgh has its own student clubs, but there are also five C students clubs. So you mingle with other students a lot. And another great thing is we do cross registration. So you can take classes at other colleges as well. And I do want to mention that you can also take classes at our two grad institute as, as well. So you get to meet a lot of grad students, those MBA students from the Claremont Graduate University. So there's a lot of social life going on. And there's no like boundaries between like Pittsburgh and CMC or Scripps. Like the door is literally open all the time. So you don't need to swipe and get into the other colleges. So we are very, very close. So the next question is um, currently at Pitzer, we're going to have like a lot of classes. So what classes do you enjoy the most? Jackson's face said that he wanted to answer it. So I'm like, well, like, like classes, like as like the, the the subject or like specific classes. There's a lot of classes, like the cross registration thing. So can you talk about that and also like your favorite class that you've taken? Uh oh god, this is always the hardest question. Um I think, well, I've always been really interested in STEM and economics. So like those have been like two of my like I know I like that those are like tried and true. But like, I think this semester I'm taking nothing that's in my comfort zone. I'm taking an anthropology class, a sociology class, and um, oh, it's my, an ethics class. And so like, they're all really challenging in their own different way, but I love all of them. And it's really fun, like finding the interdisciplinary aspects in between each. Like I've been able to bring up anthropology and ethics and in, uh, so in sociology, like talk about poverty, going back to anthropology, like there's it, the connections are endless, but I think, I mean, that's something that I've, it's hard, it's a hard question because all classes are really great, but my favorite go-to class that I always love to talk about um, is my oceanography class that I took at uh, Keck, which I'm sure when I thought of oceanography, I thought it was going to be learning about like, you know, all the animals that are in Finding Nemo, but it was like anything but that. It was like, we talked about how ancient civilizations like uh, went extinct from changes in ocean currents how you can use like the oxygen isotopes located in um, the silica found in like microorganisms to trace back the level of temperature that was like millions of years ago. And it was, it was just like an incredible, incredible class. Um, and it, yeah, it, like every single time, every single time I left that class, my mind was blown. Um, so I think that's, I think I answered, <laughs> I hope. Yeah, I can jump in. Um, one of my favorite classes is I'm actually taking this semester at Harvey Mudd, but it's called Intersectionality of Leadership. And it literally is group therapy. I don't know how else to describe it. It's unreal. Like you come in and there's eight students and it's all student run and you can talk about whatever you want related to intersectionality and leadership. And I think I've grown as a leader tremendously. It's all about like interpersonal dynamics and how you're working together. I'm kind of like being vulnerable to strangers and seeing what happens, which has been a lot of fun for me. 
Um, I also love a class I've taken called authoritarian institutions, which is pretty different, um, but also really cool. We learned about how like the Beatles helped end the Soviet Union and things like that. Um, so a lot of like niche little readings you're going to have throughout your time at Pitzer in really creative and fun ways. Um, but one suggestion I have that I've definitely done the past three years is that each semester I kind of make a theme for myself about classes so that they can all like connect in one way or the other. Um, it's like next year my theme is leadership. So I'm in field work and leadership, interpersonal dynamics and ethical constructs and organizations, as well as my senior thesis about diversity, equity, inclusion. Um, but it's all like themed. And so then you can have like do all these like intersecting, um, make like connections throughout all the classes, which is a lot of fun. Our next question is about roommates. So kind of how do roommates work? How do you get matched up with your roommates? Uh, and then if there's a choice between being assigned randomly and choosing a roommate, what do you recommend? I mean, Kayla, do you wanna speak to this first? Yes, so you usually, before you come into Pitzer, there's like Facebook groups or Discord groups that you're able to join and talk to a lot of different people. Um, that are also incoming students. So you can meet all these different people. And like over time, you're kind of just going to decide like, this is my friend, let me see if I'm interested in rooming with them. Um, so you have the option of picking your roommate. That's something that's new this year. You fill out a survey and then you both have to write down that like you want that person to be your roommate. Um, and then they also have a random selection process that also has worked out really well for a lot of people too. But in my personal experience, I picked my roommate in my first year. Um, loved her, she's fantastic. Um, um, but then in the next year, I decided to change roommates after I got back from being abroad. Um, so it just kind of depends on like what you want in your own roommate experience. They ask you a lot of questions like, what time do you go to bed? Are you okay with like eating food in your room? Um, just random things. And I would say that I've had great roommate experiences. And if anyone else wants to add anything about their experience with roommates. Yeah, I'll jump in. Um, I did random my first semester or my first year. Um, and it was absolutely amazing. Like I, my roommate, they are one of the coolest people that I've ever met in my entire life. They're a super talented artist. They actually painted one of the murals on campus, one of the really big, big murals on campus of Tarana Burke, the woman who started the Me Too movement. Um, but yeah, I absolutely adored my first year roommate. Um, and then I ended up living, I lived with different people throughout my, um, I guess my second and, and third year um, as well. And I always had, I actually always kind of had random roommates, but then I picked by sweet mates. So I got to know different people um, who I was living with, but I, then I also still had like that comfort zone of, you know, folks in my suite who I had, had known and gotten really close with. Um, and I loved that because I, I love like Pitzer people are just so cool, like Jackson said. Um, and, you know, of course, not to, you know, sugarcoat things. There's always going to be people you don't vibe with at every every school and in every community. That's what a community is about. Um, but it's just been really cool to, to get to learn, like, how to live with different people and um, getting to meet all the, the cool people who are here. Yeah, I'll also chime in to say that my freshman year, I did have a roommate and then I realized I needed a medical single my sophomore year because I'm allergic to all scented products. So if someone like sprays perfume, I will break out in hives. Um, so even if you don't realize you need a medical single your freshman year and you realize that later on, you can still get that approved as you go. Um, so our housing office is really accommodating in that way. And also next year, I'm actually gonna be living with freshmen and like that literally is not a problem at all. Like I'm really excited to like be in that community. I think that shows also like how close our grades are and that even though you're technically like living with your grade your freshman year and then usually you're like with people of similar grades going on, you still interact with other grades all the time. And there's not like weird stigma about like living with different grades as you go. We have another question that's related to academic advising. So can you speak to the academic advising experience? Um, I know Olivia was an academic guide, so I'm gonna send that one to her. Yeah, so I was an academic guide last year, two years ago, uh, and it was really fun. I really loved being an academic guide. So an academic guide, um, the goal is mainly to just help first years register. Our registration process is like a little complicated because it has cross registration. So you have a lot of classes and it can just be very stressful. Also first years register last. So we just all went through the registration process. Well, I guess you guys are seniors. So some of you did not, but we, those of us who are attending school next year just went through the registration process. Uh, and 
it's great. Classes fill up pretty quickly, which is intense. So when you're a first year, it can be really intimidating. It can look like it there are no classes available, which is not true. Uh, so academic guides kind of help with that transition, help you understand how to register. We also have um, what we call permission to enroll requests, which is how you kind of talk to professors and get into classes, even if they are full. Uh, that happens a lot. We have a two week ad drop period. So it's just a really good uh, transition help. And I do think in general, one of the best things about Pitzer is our orientation process and how we help students transition. For me specifically, it was so helpful. It's about two weeks long. You really get time to kind of get your feet under you on campus before school even starts. And you have all of these uh, students on campus who are already there for you. So I really love the registration process and I love being an academic guide. Melena, do you wanna talk about being an academic guide at all? Sure, I am going to be an academic guide for the fall, so I could be your academic guide next year. Um, but it's really cool that you also not only have academic guides, but you also have OA leaders. And so when I was an OA leader, I was also kind of like a semi-academic guide. And then I sat with all of my um, OABs, as we call them, but just my mentees. Um, one by one, I invited them to my room and during their registration time, and we talked through classes, I made spreadsheets, I offered snacks, and we got through it together. So it is a little stressful, but you'll make it through. And you have tons of upperclassmen mentors, as Olivia was saying, who are ready and happy to help you along your way we also one thing i forgot to add is that we also have advisors that are uh professors that you get through your first year seminar which is a class all students take uh all first years take and so you have not only your academic guide which is a student on campus but you also have an academic advisor that is a professor um this next question is tell us your thoughts about the consortium and how it differs from a more traditional college or university kaylee do you want to start Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think the, the biggest thing is that there's, you know, five schools in one. Um, so we really like I tell people when you're thinking about your day to day experience at the consortium, think about it in terms of the consortium. Um, so as Melena kind of mentioned before, you have your home base, which is, you know, your home institution. We are all our home base is Pitzer. That's uh, that's where we live. That's, you know, our community. Those are our people. Like when we're out and about around the consortium, we're like, ah, oh, pizza person, got it. That's, you know, that's like my family. Um, but then um, you're constantly walking across the schools every single day. So the whole five, um, 5C campus is just one square mile. And there are no, you know, fences or boundaries or anything like that. So you're just constantly walking through the campuses, um, eating at other dining halls, um, doing clubs, activities. Um, I love music, so I use the music department at Pomona all the time. I go there three times a day uh, to use practice rooms and to take music classes and for rehearsals and things. Um, and so you, you know, when you are making friends and when you're in classes, the, your, your um, like individual school identity kind of melds into the consortium identity. You know, when you're in class, the first day of class, you say, I'm Kaylee and I go to Pitzer. And then after that, you don't really talk about the fact that, you know, what school you go to, you're just a 5C student. Um, so you really, you get, you know, Pitzer being a little over a thousand students and then the consortium, it's a little under 6,000, I think 5,800 or 5,900. Um, and so you really, you, you get kind of the best of both worlds. You get to experience both sides, being a consortium member and being um, a, a Pitzer student. Um, so I think that is something unique that you, you can't find anywhere else, a consortium of five schools that where you don't have to bus in between them. So. I would also like to add, too, that I feel like uh, more of like a university style setting, you don't really interact like Haley was saying, you don't interact with the other colleges as much. There's like some sort of geographical difference between like the arts department and like the science department. Um, but I feel like because we're all on the same campus and we're like literally all right on top of each other, it was an intentionally created consortium. So you can just walk across the street and you're right at CMC or walk like two minutes and you're at Harvey Mudd. So I feel like that's also something that I really like. Um, we have a question that is about the party scene. So can you share a little bit about the party scene at Pitzer and is it separate at each of the Claremont colleges? I'm gonna send this to Melina because I really like her answer to this question. <laughs> 
Sure, yes, I can take this question. Um, I really love the party scene at the consortium. What's really nice is that it's really interconnected. Um, so one school would have a party, but everyone throughout the consortium is invited. So that's just another outlet to make 5C friends if that's something you want to do. Um, you definitely don't have to go to parties if you don't want to. There's no pressure to do that. Um, but it is a really fun and inclusive environment. Um, it's not like we, we don't have any frats or sorority. So everything is really on campus and outside, which is really nice. You can like come and go and like hang out with your friends and things like that. Um, I am someone who has never drank or smoked in my life, and I can say I love going to parties, specifically CMC parties that are known as like the frattier parties, and I have a great time. Like they have really great music. I have never pressure to do anything I don't want to do. I really like EDM and pop music and things like that, so there is like something for everyone. Again, you do not have to engage in it, and there's so many other things to do. Um, I have like hung out with my friends or done collaging or my friend tried to teach me how to knit didn't really work out very well but there's so many things you can do um but I really love that like it's just super inviting and friendly and a fun time I'll also just quickly add that um I another reason that I I completely agree with Melina and another reason that I really like the party scene on campus is that again going back to this idea of community not to sound like a broken record but um everyone like looks out for each other um so i know like for me my parents were worried about me as a woman being 1500 miles away far, you know my dad is very very protective very old school very old school southern dad um and so so i have always felt like super safe on campus and looking out for folks and making sure that um, everyone is being taken care of and everyone is just continuing to have fun and being able to enjoy themselves. Um, so again, it's, it's just a really a, a supportive and fun environment. Our next question is, what is a typical day at Pitzer like? And so obviously this is going to be different for everyone, but uh, Stella, do you want to start? Uh, oh, yep. Of course, so it's a little bit hard for me to revisit my day on campus at Pitzer just because we've been uh, virtually for so long, but I will try. Um, so I kind of overload my classes in my junior year. So I do take five classes that semester. So a day would be a bit busier for me. So I will usually wake up around eight or 8.30 and I did breakfast every single day in a dining hall. That's not the most economic choice for you all. So I would not <laughs> recommend it, um, but I would, get my breakfast and then run to classes around 9 or 9.15 and then just when class period is over, it's usually 9.15 to 10.30 or some class so some classes start very early on at 8ish um, and then 10.30 I usually take a nap around 20 minutes and then I just wait in the dining hall for lunch to open at 11 so I need to take a lot of food every single day. And usually I'll hang out with my friends for lunch or I will do homework while I was getting lunch. Um, and you have a lot of options. You can eat outside on the balcony or you can eat, take your food out in your green box, in a mound. Um, there's always pit stop that's near the academic quad where you take classes at. So during the class period, when you have like 15 minutes or 20 minutes break in between, you can always go to pit stop, grab a drink using your flex, which is kind of like a dining dollars thing that goes with your meal plan. Have a coffee, have some bagels there, and then just hang out with friends. By the way, a lot of our students have dogs and it's definitely the highlight of my life where you can go to Pistol and pet a lot of dogs on their mouths. Yeah, I see Kaylee is not in her head. Yeah, so you have classes and then sometimes you have meetings with your affinity groups or whatever uh, clubs that you are within and then that's dinner. So I would say a day usually go past by really fast if you have classes and meetings. It's For me, it's kind of always like go, go, go. But of course, you have a lot of free time to enjoy yourself and see dogs and enjoy the sunshine in the Southern California during your breaks. Cool. So our next question is, do students go to LA, the beaches, the mountains very much? Kaylee's nodding. <laughs> Yeah, I like this question. Um, I go to LA so much. <laughs> um, I'm a big city girl and I love being in Claremont for school, but I like I have moments where I'm like, I need to get out <laughs> and I need to to explore and I can't do that. It's super accessible. Um, 
So there's a train that takes you from uh, downtown Claremont to downtown LA in under an hour. Um, I took that train twice a month to go into LA, um, which my friends all thought I was crazy, but I would like bring books on the train and, and do homework. And, you know, I got, got all my stuff done. Um, but I love just like exploring LA, going to different museums. I'm kind of a nerd. Um, I'm also a big foodie. I'm really into vegan food, of which there is plenty in LA. So I would go try out new restaurants every weekend or every other weekend. Um, and then I also actually have just started getting into the outdoorsy scene um, kind of during, uh, during COVID because I've hated being cooped up and staring at a laptop screen all day. Um, and I really wish I would have taken advantage of it earlier on because there's a ton of stuff to do, um, even just in the Claremont area. So we're like 30 minutes away from Mount Baldy, um, which is the highest peak in the, um, uh, in the local mountain range. Um, and so you can go up there in February this year, it was snowing, as you can see the snow in, in Jackson's screen. Um, so it can be like 80 degrees in Claremont on campus and then you go up to the mountain and it's snowing and it's so fun. Um, there's a lot of hiking opportunities. Um, there's like waterfalls nearby that are super fun to go to. Um, there's also the Claremont Wilderness Trail um, that has um, like a five mile loop, which is great for like running or hiking. Um, yeah, I love it. There's also like lots of hikes in LA uh, to go to. Um, Joshua Tree is not too far away. That's another outdoor um, recreation center. Um, I think it's like two hours away from here. Um, yeah, there's, there's a lot of stuff to do. There's also zip cars on campus um, to get you to those places. Um, so if you don't wanna take the train, there's also zip cars, which you can rent by the hour or by the day. Um, and you only have to be 18 to rent them. So they're really great for college students, um, as well as also there's um, a bus that you can take as well. Okay, and our final question, we're gonna go rapid fire and I'll do what uh, our favorite meal from the five C's is, um, or Pitzer specifically. And my answer is a whole day that I missed the most, which was Thursday lunch, which was pasta bar, and then Thursday night, which was poke bowls and Caesar salad bar. And people make fun of this Caesar salad bar, but it hits, it hits so good. Uh, and I would eat it outside at the little outdoor um, space called Susan's Garden at McConnell. And that was my favorite. Okay, I'll go next. I will say that mine is anything that Ken makes. Ken is one of the staff members in the dining hall who's fantastic. He makes like pad thai, bao bar. There's a, so many things that he makes. Oh. Miss everything that Ken cooks. I'm gonna go Jackson. Uh, it's an easy question. Every other response you're gonna hear is wrong. Uh, it's Saturday night pasta bar. Okay, and let me tell you what's special about Saturday night pasta bar. It's the tortellini. Okay, because usually they don't have tortellinis on on Thursday pasta bar, but on Saturday night they got the tortellini. I throw little peas in there, some mushrooms, a little little mix of the sauces, a little bit of chicken perhaps if I'm feeling a little feisty. Mm. Chef kiss right there. Uh, I think Milena's next. I can go. I have two favorites. I really love stir fry. I like mixing the curry sauce and the Korean barbecue. Really good with the noodles. Um, as well as we have this weird grilled cheese that no one knows about, but it's really good, is they put spaghetti and marinara sauce inside the grilled cheese sandwich. Kind of like spaghetti tacos from Mike Harley. Tastes really similar, but it's really good. And I always look forward to that. And I'm the only one who gets it. Okay, I'll go next. Um, I actually think that mine is the toast bar that happens on the morning in the morning. I love going to breakfast, um, which not a lot of people do, um, because it's like 730 to 10 a.m. Uh, during the week. But Thursday morning, there was toast bars you make made to order and they would do like, they have like Nutella and berries, you can go like sweet, or you can go savory and do like some guac and like do some fancy avocado toast. Um, so eggs, if you're into that, um, yeah, really yummy. Yes, I was just about to say Thursday morning to tell bar, but I switched my answer to Tuesday lunch. I believe it's Tuesday lunch. There's a farmer's, farmer's bowl where they, it's kind of like a salad style and you can choose all the ingredients. I think one of the most highlight of the things in the dining hall is like, they make the food right in front of you. So it's not like you pick your pasta, you pick your pie thai. They can literally customize everything for you but you have to wait, that's the cost of that. But I would say that's definitely worth the waiting. 
Thank you all so much for your really good answers as well as being on this panel in general. And thank you all uh, for your really good questions. We're gonna take about a 10 minute break. So we'll be back at 10 a.m. Pacific time, whatever 10 minutes is to you. Um, uh, for Melina giving a really great video tour of Pitzer. It's a new video tour that we haven't had for very long. So it's a different view of Pitzer. It's gonna be very great, informative, kind of give you more of a feel of campus. So see you back here in 10 minutes. Thank you all so much for coming and for being great panelists. Hello everyone, welcome back from the break. Um, right now I'm going to do the virtual tour so we can get started. I'm just gonna share my screen one second. And so this will be a really cool opportunity for you to get a new angle on campus um, and kind of see what we're all about and feel like you're in person a little bit. Um, so I'm gonna be talking for the next hour or so, giving you a full tour of campus, but if you do have any questions throughout the next hour, you can definitely put those in the Q&A function and someone from our office will be happy to answer them for you. Um, but right now, I want to quickly do a introduction about myself and sorry if it's a little repetitive and then we can go ahead and get started. So this would be our admissions office right here. So that's where most of our tours will begin. Um, but once again, my sorry, I'm going to be switching between two slides, so don't mind me. Um, but my name is Melina Aishi, her pronouns. I'm a junior at Pitzer from New York City. I'm majoring in organizational studies and minoring in anthropology with an overall concentration in urban studies. And I am really involved on campus. I love to stay busy. So I'm part of APAC, which is the Asian Pacific American Coalition, WAL, which is our Women of Color Affinity Group on campus, Identity Board, which is a group where we'll have one member from every affinity group meeting together weekly and talking about intersectionality and coalition building, things like that, doing a lot of cross-group events. I'm also part of the Campus Aesthetics Committee. So all of the murals you'll see throughout the tour um, actually have to go through my committee to get approved, which is really exciting. Duan Duan is also on that committee as well. I'm um, also on Student Senate as well as being an orientation leader and academic guide for our freshman orientation program, and as well as being on the COVID task force. And I'm also a tutor for the Pomona um, Unified School District, which has been a lot of fun. Um, and a quick fun fact about me is that I was adopted from the same orphanage that Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie adopted their son from. So sometimes I pretend that we're cousins, which is not true, but I think it'd be funny. Um, we can go ahead and get started. Um, so to begin my tours, I really like to talk about our core values just because they're really essential to our campus and they're definitely not buzzwords. Um, you're definitely going to see them in different ways, um, which is really special to kind of unpack and uncover when you're on campus, both in the social aspects of campus, but also um, sorry, um, in the th physical spaces that we'll occupy as well. But those include intercultural understanding, interdisciplinary learning, student engagement, social responsibility, and environmental sustainability. So I'll be talking about those throughout our tour as we go. Um, but right now we're going to head to the GSC, which is the first building we'll go into. This is the biggest multi-purpose space we have on campus, and it's home to several resources that I'll be happy to talk about when we head inside. Um, at some points in the tour, I will put it on two times speed, um, just so we can get through things a little bit faster. So if it speeds up, that is why, but we can go on this roller coaster together. Um, but right here we have the GSC or the inside of the GSC. Um, this door on the right hand side of the screen is the Dolores Huerta room. So that's where LSU resides. LSU is our Latinx student union. Um, what's really cool about Pitzer is that all of our affinity groups actually have physical spaces that we occupy on campus and we're meeting there weekly and talking about what it's like to have that identifier on our campus as well as in the world around us. Um, aside from those meetings, you're welcome to hang out in those spaces whenever you'd like. Um, APAC actually does have a kitchen, so oftentimes we cook together, so there are a lot of fun um, aspects. RPC does have a bathroom in their room, which is pretty exciting, so it's really nice to see like what your room has to offer on our campus as well. Um, but in the GSC on the first floor, we also have our fitness center. Um, so since we are part of a consortium, we do share a sports team with Pomona. So together we are the Pomona Pitzer Sagehens, um, and we do share 21 D3 sports as well as we have one um, 5C sport, which is men's rugby. So if you want to engage in that, you definitely can do that. And that is a D1 sport. And then we have tons of club and intramural sports to choose from as well. And those can range from an equestrian team, inner tube, water polo, archery. We really do have everything. So if you want to get involved in any type of sport, you definitely can on campus. And what's really nice is that if we don't have something you want, you can just initiate it and start it yourself and start a club and that is a very smooth process if that's something you're interested in. Um, I personally was not a big gym person before coming to college and now I can safely say I do go to the gym about four to five times a week. I go at the busiest hours so I can make the most friends so I always go like right before dinner um, which is really fun. I'm really into ballet bar which is like a ballet like 
Pilates type of workout. And so I always like to flex my two pound weights next to the football team and hope I don't get laughed at, but um, it's definitely a fun time. Nonetheless, uh, Pomona does have our larger gym facilities. So they're gonna have our bigger football field, a track field, um, all of our volleyball, volleyball courts, basketball courts, things like that, which you're welcome to use whenever you'd like. And then CMC, Harvey Mudd and Scripps will also, also share a sports team. So we have a lot of um, kind of cross consortium rivalry going on throughout the year. Um, our big Sixth Street rivalry game for our football team is really popular when the two teams play against each other. And it's really nice to go and support um, the Sage Hens during that time. Um, this is a video of upstairs of the GSC. So we have some more resources up here. So we're going to have our yoga studio right here, as well as like a dance studio. I love to dance. So I go there all the time. Um, this is our Pilates studio. If you're interested in taking Pilates classes, you can actually teach Pilates classes as well as yoga classes and get compensated to do that if you're interested. Um, but my favorite space is right here. This is the Gold Student Center multi-purpose room. So this is a big room, as you can see, where students can rent this out for free um, and do various events throughout the year. Our most popular event is Snacky Snack. So that will happen every Tuesday night at 10 p.m., which is when our Pitzer um, Activities Board will actually bring food for free for our students from the local area. And we get to kind of line up on the staircase with our reusable plates and bowls, and it's a lot of fun. Um, they've done everything from the Cheesecake Factory to Chipotle. They've done Indian food, Greek food. We did Miracle Berry Snack. So that's where you take those like berries that you eat and everything turns sweet. Um, and people would eat those and then they had like limes and lemons and milk and all kinds of weird foods, but it was a really fun activity to engage in with the community as well. So then moving on, we're going to head to freshman housing. So this is POS right here. So POS includes Pitzer Hall, East um, Sanborn, North Sanborn and Atherton. So there are four dorms, three of them will surround the pool directly. And then one of them is a little off to the side next year, Scandera and our upperclassmen housing will also be used for freshman housing. Um, but it's a really unique experience at Pitzer that all first years get to live together because you really get to form a strong bond with your grade. I definitely can say after living kind of in this complex, I know everyone's name in my grade. I definitely don't know any like everything about them. So I think that's really important distinction to make is that a lot of people will ask me, oh, do you think Pitzer is too small? I definitely do not think Pitzer is too small. Um, I'll just say that everyone knows who you are and you're important and you're seen as like a person as opposed to just a number. And if you do see someone once, you're probably going to see them again. Um, but that doesn't mean you know their whole life story or anything like that. Um, right here is what a typical dorm room looks like at Pitzer. Um, and what's really cool is that all of our dorm rooms look exactly the same. So for a type A person like me, that was really helpful because when I toured Pitzer, I was already kind of planning what I wanted the space to look like, um, which was a lot of fun. Um, but as you can see, each dorm will have two beds, two three drawer dressers, which you can't see in this image, but it is there. Two desks and two closet areas. And as someone who did bring a lot of stuff to college, it does all fit, um, especially if you are coming from the East Coast, there are plenty of like programs you can do with Bed Bath & Beyond and you can shop at Target and things like that to get all of your stuff here and it's a pretty smooth transition that I'm happy um, to talk about more if people are interested in that. Um, but as you can see it's a great space you can personalize it to be whatever you want it to be so you can kind of loft the beds and put your desk under the bed. Um, you can put up a lot of like fun decorations with like sticky tack and things like that that's what I've always done. Um, last year I actually did the New York City skyline out of like printed pictures which was a really fun activity for me as well as I took Polaroid pictures of everyone who came into my room and I would have them like put the date on and sign it. And that was a really nice way um, to kind of like form community through pictures. Um, but what's also really nice about Pitzer is we don't have any hall bathrooms on campus. Instead, it's all suite style living. So each um, suite is comprised of two dorms and then a bathroom in between kind of like a Jack and Jill style bathroom, which is just off to the side in this picture um, on the right hand side. Um, and so you're never sharing a bathroom with more than three other people on campus, which is awesome. I really like to stress that this gives you two extra roommates, because even though you only have one roommate in your own room, a lot of times you'll befriend the suite next to you because you're sharing the bathroom space as well. Um, so it's nice to kind of form community in that way, too. Um, furthermore, um, in the bathroom, there will be it's kind of like a hallway style. So as you can see, there are two sinks um, right there. And then parallel to this two sinks, you're going to have a separate area for your shower and a separate area for your toilet. So it's super easy for all four of you to be in there at the same time and not feel like you're crowding over each other or anything like that, which is really convenient. Um, additionally, when you become an upperclassman, the rooms look almost exactly the same for most of the dorms. There's one that looks a little different, but I'll talk about that a little later on the tour as well. But I can just speed through this section. Again, next year, you actually get to choose your roommate if that's something you're interested in. Um, I did go in random, which worked really well for me. But if that's not something you want to do, you can just choose your roommate and kind of 
do some of our res life activities to find a roommate that suits you. Um, I will also say that you definitely don't have to be best friends with your roommate. You obviously can if you want to be, but it's totally fine to also just be like great living partners. And that's totally fine because you're going to make friends throughout your time at Pitzer if that is not like directly in your dorm room. So there's time to bond in all sorts of ways. Um, but right here, we do have the Shakedown Cafe. So this is one of three on-campus eateries that we have that does not include the dining hall. Um, I really like this um, because it used to be run by students. So students were doing all of the meal prep, the management, working at the cash register. You're still welcome to um, work here in the future if that's something you're interested in. And I really suggest um, specifically for first years if they want an on-campus job to work at the Shakedown Cafe because it's a fantastic way to make friends. Um, obviously, if you're at the cash register, you're meeting everyone who kind of comes um, to check out their food and you can just befriend them in that way as well. Um, additionally, in this patio area, this is where we have a bi-weekly event called Shakedown Sounds. So that's a student-run talent show where students are welcome to perform anything from songs, dances, political rants, um, spoken word poetry, um, and all of us come to support each other bi-weekly on Thursday nights at 8 p.m. We do invite our staff and faculty to come if they want, and they can even perform. So it's a really great space, especially if you've never performed in front of anyone before and you want to try that out for the first time. A lot of people use that as an opportunity to do so. Um, right now we can continue through POS. Um, so as you can see, these like yellow blocks are actually the bathrooms and then the two orange doors on either side of the yellow block are the two dorms that will share the bathroom. So at Pitzer, you're never sharing a bathroom with more than um, two, other oh, two other people, three other people, sorry, as I said before. Um, sorry, I'm just looking at the chat real quick because I can't see the chat when I'm um, showing my slides. Um, okay, great, sorry, that was just about questions. Um, but moving forward, as you can see, all of our dorms are actually outside, which is really nice. My mom likes to call it modern motel living, which I definitely think is true. Um, I really love kind of the outdoor catwalks that we have because it's easy to kind of make plans with friends. Sometimes I'll be walking on one catwalk and my friend will be walking on another catwalk and we'll just kind of like scream across the way and make dinner plans. And I'll see if anyone also shows up to that meal, but it's always um, fun to kind of know that you're really a part of the community and it's your home through that way as well. Um, additionally, in all of our dorms, we do have a ton of amenities. So we're going to have laundry rooms, study rooms, living rooms, a kitchen. Um, so everything is right at your fingertips, which is really nice for me, especially because I don't know how to drive. So having everything right there is great. Um, as you can see, we also have a ton of cacti and succulents on our campus um, and spread throughout our campus. And that is because about 75% of our campus is filled with drought tolerant plants that are also native to the area, which is really exciting just to be mindful of the um, ecosystem that we're living in and and of our water consumption as well. Um, additionally, housing is guaranteed for all four years. Last year, about 83% 80, of the student body lived on campus and the rest of the students lived in off-campus apartments or houses or things like that. So it really just depends on what you want out of the experience. Um, I really do love our dorm culture. It is very strong. So a lot of students really want to spend all four years um, on campus, but it just depends on your personal preferences. Um, I am living in like off-campus apartments right now and that works out really well, but I'm excited to go back next year as well to live on campus in POS actually, which will be fun. Um, but right here is our pool. This is one of two recreational pools across the consortium. So this is one way we really interact with the other consortium colleges is that people love to come out and hang out with us by the pool. Scripps also does have one, but it's mostly for Scripps students. Um, identity Board hosts a really fun event on our campus where we have a pool party and we invite all of our identity groups to come out and listen to music from our various cultures. And it's a really great opportunity just to take space in our community and have a nice day outside. People also love to like do their homework out there, I listen to music, hang out with friends. So it's a space we use all the time. It is not heated, so it does get a little cold in the winter, but people still like to do polar bear swims and all things like that. Uh, but again, this will be POS. And we can head over to upperclassmen housing now. Also, all of these buildings right here are gold lead certified, which means they're very environmentally sustainable. You can see that through a few ways. One is in our dual flush toilets in the bathrooms, as well as you open, if you open the door or open the window for an extended period of time, the air conditioning will actually turn off to save energy as well, um, which is awesome. You get a nice natural air conditioner. Um, all these orange doors, as you can see, are actually hatch style doors. So that's a big part of our campus culture. And so basically the top half of the door will open while the bottom half stays shut. Um, so personally, when I lived in one of these dorms, it was really fun to kind of leave my hatch open all the time and play music and do my homework and see if people would like my music and stop by. Sometimes they didn't like it, but they did stop by and just walk in and say hi to me, which was really fun. Um, especially like in the holiday times, people do trick or treating or just like bake brownies and cookies and literally stand outside their door for like an hour and give like snacks to people who walk by. So it's really fun to form community in that way as well. 
Um, right now we can head to upperclassmen housing. Um, we are about to pass a blue light, which is right here. Um, so right on the right hand side of the screen, you can see a blue light. So we do have the blue light system spread throughout the five C's. Um, at Pitzer specifically, we have about 21 blue lights. And the rule is that whenever you're at a blue light, you should always be able to see another one. So if you feel unsafe on campus for whatever reason, you can just press the blue light button or the button on the blue light and someone will be there to help you right away. I personally have never used the blue light or seen it been used, but it is a great resource to have on our campus. We do have campus security kind of on our campus all the time on golf carts, like driving around on golf carts, which are super fun. Um, and it's really nice to get to know them and they really want to get to know you as people. One of them stopped by me and my friends one day and was asking us our names and um, what grade we were, we were in and why we liked Pitzer, things like that. And we're like, oh, like, why are you asking us that? And then he was like, oh, I really want to get to know the student body on campus and not be someone who's just lurking in the background, but really be a part of the community as well, um, which I thought was really nice. And after that, we always wave to each other. And I still talk to him like when we're on campus now. So it's really nice to kind of form community in that way. Um, the building we just passed on the left hand side is Atherton so that's the other freshman dorm that's not directly around the pool but very close um, so that's another space to live if that's something you're interested in um, and now we'll head to upperclassmen housing upperclassmen housing looks very similar to freshman housing it was built a few years later so there are some additional amenities that I'll go into but most of them is pretty similar most of them are pretty similar um, to the freshman housing option um, but first I'll take you into the demo kitchen so the demo kitchen is right here and so this is the kitchen for upperclassmen students, but anyone is welcome to use it. And the Pitzer Atherton Sanborn complex also does have a kitchen if that's something you want to utilize while you're at Pitzer. But basically, this is not a meal replacement and that most people do not eat all of their meals through the kitchen, but you're welcome to use the space whenever you'd like to make a cake for your friends or do a cookie night, things like that. My friend did a pasta night every Thursday night where she'd make different types of pasta for her friends um, and they'd all come to the demo kitchen and eat together. What's really cool is that you actually don't like reserve a space in the demo kitchen. So there could be like another whole set of friends um, kind of in that space. And then you can mingle together when you're in there sharing that space together, which is really fun. Um, as an OA leader last year, I actually did a fun event um, where I did a fondue night. So I bought like chocolate and strawberries and potato chips and a lot of weird things for my group. And then we did a fondue night in there to kind of like bond as a group, which is a really fun memory that I have. Um, but right now we're going to head into upperclassmen housing, as I just said. As you can see, it's extremely close to freshman housing, which I really think emphasizes how close we are in our four grades. There is no form of hierarchy um, where seniors have any more power than freshmen. We're really sharing the space together, and you're going to see that through our dorms as well. But after your first year, you will um, have the opportunity to live with sophomores, juniors, or seniors at the same time. So sophomores, juniors, and seniors share these three dorms, as well as one dorm called Mead, which I'll show you a little later on the tour. These are called East Hall, West Hall, and Scandera Hall. Um, and since they were built a little after freshman housing, they're actually Platinum LEED certified, which is pretty cool. Um, so they have additional environmental features. So we have solar panels on our roofs, as well as the green roofs, um, which are like little grassy patches. And we have the gray water system as well, which traps the immense amount of rainwater we're getting in the desert, as well as all of the water from the bathroom and bathrooms, and it's redistributing it on our plant life, just to be mindful once again of our water consumption. Um, kind of in the environmental space that we're occupying. Additionally, East Hall, West Hall, and Scandera Hall all have um, a set of single suites. So on each floor, there's one suite that's home to four singles. Um, so oftentimes people with medical singles or medical accommodations will be living in those suites, but sometimes you can get lucky as a junior or senior and be able to um, live there with luck of room draw. Um, I did live there my sophomore year in a medical single in East Hall, which was super nice. And it's something that if you need, it's a great resource to have. And there's like a shared living room and a shared bathroom, but then you do get your own room if that's something you need on our campus as well. Um, additionally, in this one area, we do have about 14 study rooms. And then we have study rooms throughout our whole campus. Um, but what I really love about our study rooms is that each study room has one wall that's completely windows. So you really feel like you're a part of the community um, right here as we're walking down the stairs, um, kind of to the left of this image would be some of our study rooms. And as someone who does have learning disabilities, it was really important for me to find a space on campus where I could spend a lot of time in and not feel isolated. So I definitely didn't want to do all my studying in my room, but I really love studying in these study spaces because I can be studying and wave to all my friends walking to class and things like that. So it's a really nice way to kind of stay involved in the community as well. And I also really like to talk about waving culture that we have on campus because I think it's really prevalent, um, especially coming from New York City where no one waves. Like if you see someone, you know, you look the other way. Um, that's definitely not the case at Pitzer. 
one of my friends and I, his name's Aaron, um, and I was studying in one of the study rooms one day and we saw a guy like walking on the catwalk and we didn't know him, but we thought it would be funny to start waving at him to see what happens. Uh, so we started waving and at first he was a little confused and looking behind him like, oh, what, are you talking to me? Things like that. And then he realized we were talking to him um, and then he waved back and throughout the week we just kept seeing him on campus because we are a pretty small campus. We just kept waving um, and then at the end of the week we did see him in the dining hall. Um, and then we said like, hey, like we're the people who keep waving at you. Like we didn't mean to be creepy. We just want to make new friends. And he thought that was really cool. We all became friends. Um, one of my other best friends actually did meet through literally waving to him. I knew nothing about him, but we always had the same like schedule and that we were walking to the academic quad at the same time. And so I felt weird, like just not interacting with him. So I just started waving one day and he waved back and um, we kind of talked about how we had the same schedule and became friends that way. So yep, it's, it's super easy to make friends, um, kind of form community. Even if you are coming from a faraway place, it's not like the California culture dominates anything or anything like that, which is super nice as well. Um, additionally, right now, we're going to head into Scandera Hall. And what's really nice about Scandera is that not only is it a dorm, but it's also an academic building. So the first floor will have academic classrooms, and the next three floors are going to have dorms. Um, so if you do live in Scandera while you're at Pitzer, it's really cool. You can literally get to class in two minutes. <laughs> you just take the elevator or the stairs, and you're right in your classroom, which is super convenient. Um, additionally, that like brown floor you just saw is perfect for scootering. If you're interested in that, it's very smooth, and I always like to kind of scooter um, there as a like a little shortcut to get to my dorm after class. Um, but right now you can see, as you can see, we have a Scandera classroom and in Scandera we do have Harkness style discussion tables. So that's where everyone is looking at each other instead of at a professor. And this really promotes this discussion based learning that we do have at Pitzer and that there's no lectures. It's really, um, I like to kind of use the metaphor. It's like everyone's coming to a dinner table together and engaging in dialogue about the reading, which is really fun. I mean, it really kind of unites your class in really cool ways as well. Um, but obviously, if we were in person, I would take you into this room, but that's quite all right. Um, I can virtually teleport us all there and give my academic spiel of the tour. Um, sorry, it's a little lengthy, but it's pretty interesting if I say so myself. Um, so hopefully you will find that interesting as well. Um, but I'm going to cover four different topics in my academic spiel. So I'll start with talking about majors and minors at Pitzer. Then I'll go into graduation requirements. Then I'll go to, into taking classes at the consortium colleges. And then I'll end with a freshman academic transition into college. So at Pitzer, we do have 40 majors and 20 minors. And um, what's really nice is you don't have to declare your major till the middle of your junior year. So you do have plenty of time to really figure out what you want your classes to look like, what you want to major in. Um, you can even like make, make a mistake and decide you want to start with EA, environmental analysis, and then switch to psychology, um, you have time for all of that, which is really nice. Um, I actually came into Pitzer thinking I was going to create my own major in urban studies because I really love that. Um, but then I fell in love with organizational studies. So I decided to do an org studies major with a concentration in urban studies. So again, you just have that flexibility um, to kind of create your own path at Pitzer, which is really great. Um, additionally, we really want to make sure you're doing something you're passionate about. So you're more than welcome to double major, doing two majors. Um, you can do a combined major where you take two majors that kind of intersect in some way, like psych and econ, for example, and do a combined major to kind of like lower your course load and then write a combined thesis if you want when you're a senior, even though thesis is not mandatory. Um, or you can do just a major or a major and a minor. So there are plenty of options to choose from and you can find what works best for you. Um, additionally, if you don't see a major that you like at Pitzer and you see a major at one of the other consortium colleges that you do like and we don't offer it, you're more than welcome to actually major at that college um, in that major. You're still going to get a degree from Pitzer, but you're just going to take a lot of your classes at one of the other consortium colleges. Um, the only exception to that is the computer science program at Harvey Mudd. They have very few majors, so it's pretty hard to major there, but you can definitely take Mudd classes and take CS classes at Mudd as well as Pomona if that's something you're interested in as well. Um, but it's really cool just to find something at the other colleges you won't like feel people ask me like will that make me like less of a Pitzer student absolutely not our colleges are super intertwined in so many different ways all of your classes will have great representation from the five C's um, so even if you're taking a lot of Pomona classes you'll still feel like a Pitzer student for sure. Um, but if none of that works for you, you're more than welcome to actually create your own major so you can work with a faculty member or several faculty members on campus and look at the course offerings and kind of talk about what you're really passionate about and kind of create like an umbrella term or umbrella major title and then with that you can kind of um, filter in all the different classes you want to take throughout the four years and create your own major and graduate with that. So I really love the flexibility in general that we have in terms of majors and minors. I'm going into graduation requirements. Um, obviously you will have your major and minor graduation requirements, but you also have um, some that every student will do. Most of them are pretty common, so I'll go over those, but we do have four special courses that we offer, which I'll go a little bit more in depth into, but to graduate you will have to complete about at least 32 course requirements or course credits that 
usually means four classes a semester, but if you want to take five classes one semester, three classes another, that's something you can definitely do as well. Um, but in terms of our graduation requirements, you are going to have to complete two humanities courses, two social science courses, one science course with a lab component, um, or if there's one class that isn't a lab component, so it really just depends, one math course, one writing intensive course, and then we have four special classes, two are called intercultural, global, and local, and the other two are called social justice, praxis, and theory requirements. So for intercultural, global, and local, that's looking into our core value of intercultural understanding from both a local and global level. Um, so I have taken actually a lot of local classes, but one of my favorites was called Race and Ethnic Relations, which I took the sophomore or the fall of my sophomore year. I and mean, that class was about 12 students. Our student to faculty ratio is 10 to one and our average class size is about 15 students. So you're always gonna have those small classes. Um, but it was a class called Race and Ethnic Relations, which obviously focused on race and ethnicity in the United States. And we had one really cool assignment where we actually got to lead a class by ourselves, which is pretty common in the humanities classes at Pitzer. Um, but I was assigned to talk about race as a performance, so the ways in people uh, in which people kind of perform their racial identity to either assimilate or fit in, stand out, things like that. We had some really powerful readings. I knew I really wanted to mix it up, so I did a Skittle discussion. So I gave everyone in the class five Skittles, one of each color. And each color was a code for something. So red was a question, orange was a personal connection, purple was a quote, and then um, yellow and green were answers to questions. And the only way you could part participate in the discussion was by using one of your Skittles. And I gave everyone questions that I'd come up with about the reading as well as quotes that I'd find found interesting, um, but it was really just a nice opportunity to kind of give people who don't talk a lot in class the opportunity to talk more and the people who talk all the time to step back a little bit and kind of have a community goal of all finishing all of our Skittles by the end of this discussion, which went really well. Um, then I definitely wanted to do kind of an activity. So I decided to do an emotions-based activity where I gave everyone a positive and negative emotion, like happy and sad. And for two minutes, they had to be actively expressing one emotion while suppressing the other. And then after the two minutes, they switched. Um, so that was also a really fun thing we did. And it was kind of an acting exercise. So you go around in those two minutes and talk about whatever you wanted with anyone, um, whether that was your favorite ice cream flavor, or how your weekend was, but the whole idea was that you're kind of lying the whole time, because let's say you had to express anger, but you had a really great weekend, you just have to lie and say it was terrible. Um, so that was kind of to simulate what it's like to have to kind of act a different way in different spaces and code switch and things like that, um, based on your identifiers. Um, and then we ended up with a fishbowl discussion. So I stuck half the class in the middle of this circle, as you can see here, and half on the outside. And you could only talk if you were on the inside of the circle. And then we did like a reflection debrief to check in with everyone. And then we switched. So that was a really fun activity. Um, but I think um, leadership definitely happens within and outside of the classroom. But I really appreciate that our Pitzer professors trust us enough to lead the class by ourselves um, and are excited to learn from us and not just be a one-way street of us learning from them, which I think is really special as well. And we do have a ton of other local classes um, to take if you're interested in any of those. So you'll find something that works for you. I took another one called Race, Class, and Gender, um, but there are really plenty of options to choose from. In terms of intercultural global, you can take a lot of courses as well. You can do anything from intro to Chicana studies, intro to Africana studies. I personally took a class called Authoritarian Institutions. So I talked a little bit about that in my prior session, but I really loved it and I wasn't expecting to. I was kind of came in in a neutral sense in that. I really love how almost every Pitzer class I've been in, if not all of them, allow me to bring my whole self into the classroom in terms of my lived experiences so I can talk about my life and how I got here and how that connects to the course subject. Um, and I was a little nervous because I was like, oh, how am I going to connect to authoritarian um, institutions? But it was a really fascinating class. I absolutely loved it. I actually wrote my final paper on how having an authoritarian mentality in my personal life has really helped me enjoy quarantine and get through it and the pandemic in my like personal life. So that was really cool. Um, and so you're going to find all of these really cool niche classes every year so you can find which one works best for you in that avenue as well. Um, then going into our social justice practice and theory courses, those are connected um, to our social, uh, sorry, our core value of social responsibility. Um, so you're going to do your theory class in the classroom, so you're learning about some kind of theory of a subject, and then you're going to go into your praxis course. Your praxis course is where you actually get to go out into the field and work with community partners and kind of focus on working with them and not for them in that process. So I like to explain what I did best just to give an example, um, but I took a class called organizational theory. So it was looking into how organizations run and function, different leadership structures, things like that. Um, and then after that, I'm in a class right now over Zoom called College Access and Virtual Times, where we're partnered with a tutoring nonprofit organization in Claremont called Middle Tree, as well as the Pomona Unified School District. And we're offering tutoring um, to those students and to kind of keep them on track to either get into college or just 
on track in, in terms of their educational route. I personally do work with elementary school students, but a lot of my peers do work with um, students who are applying to college. So it's really exciting to kind of use those organizational theory practices I learned in my classroom class in this kind of field methods class when you get to go out and practice that for yourself. But there's something for everyone. We do also have a great inside out program, which is very popular for our students, which also counts towards your praxis requirement, where we do partner with a local prison and you actually get to take classes um, in the prison with people in prison. By no means are you teaching them, you're just engaging in the class together. We do have bits of faculty who are trained to teach those courses and those will span throughout the different disciplines and throughout the different majors. You can find one that works for you. Um, but it's a really fascinating way to just kind of diversify the classroom and get a lot of new perspectives. And the people in prison do actually receive college credit for taking those classes and actually recently. And with the organizational studies program, we did start a BA program with um, the people in prison, so they're more than welcome to major in organizational studies and get a degree from Pitzer um, if they're in that program, which is a really special thing that we offer as well. Um, oftentimes, you will get your 40 hours of community engagement that you do need to um, graduate during your praxis class if that's something you're interested in, or of course, you can do that outside of the classroom in your own time, which is um, what a lot of our Pitzer students will do throughout their time as well. Um, and then moving into taking classes at the other consortium colleges. So as we were talking about before in the panel, if you were there, we do have cross registration. So all of our um, colleges register at the same time. And when you register for classes, you can actually see the classes for the whole consortium. So you can kind of like pick and choose where you want to take your classes. Um, some classes will be CMC only or Pomona only, things like that. But it's very easy to just perm into those classes or just show up on the first day and say you're super interested in taking one of those courses. Um, and you can usually get in eventually. Sometimes it will take a few years, but you can get in eventually, which is nice. Um, but it's really nice to have at least one member from every consortium college in each class that you're going to take because it really allows you to just get another diverse um, set of perspectives in the classroom as well as make a lot of 5C friends in the process, which is really cool as well. Additionally, all of our classes are kind of mixed through grades. So you're never going to be in a class besides your first year seminar, which I'll talk about in just a second. That's all one grade. It will always be like juniors, seniors, sophomores um, in the same space kind of engaging in dialogue together, which is really cool. Um, and then lastly, to go into our academic transition um, for our first years, I think Pitzer does a really great job of that. And we do that through two different outlets. So we have our fresh, uh, freshman seminar, which is called FYS, first year seminar. Um, and then we also have our academic guide program. Um, so our first year seminar is the first class you're ever going to take at Pitzer. And it's the only class you'll ever take that's all Pitzer students and all Pitzer freshmen. So it's a really great opportunity to get a new, uh, get to know a new set of students in your grade. And it's a class that will in, um, get you introduced to college level writing. So it doesn't have to correlate to your major whatsoever. It's just a fun class. Um, I took a class called What is the Scientific Method? And it was looking into scientific discoveries over time and how the biases and identifiers of the scientists had really skewed the data, which was super fascinating. Um, but there are tons of options to choose from. And there are a lot of ones that are based in sports. So if you're curious about the history of soccer or cricket or surfing, you can do um, any one of those classes. And then during finals a week, you actually get um, to surf with your professor, which is super exciting. Um, and then we have plenty of other ones to choose from as well, includes, including um, Deconstructing Disney, which is where you actually get to track the body dysmorphia, dysmorphia and racism and sexism in different Disney films and then write papers about them, which is really cool. So again, you get to choose what's, whatever works for you. Um, your FYS professor is your first academic advisor on Canvas, so they're the ones that are going to help you kind of with course registration and carving your path out at Pitzer, but when you want to declare your major, you can definitely switch advisors, um, which is what I ended up doing just because my first year seminar advisor was the head of biology in our science department, so that wasn't very helpful for me, but he's a great guy. We still um, check in and things like that. He always like dings his bell on his bike when he <laughs> rides by me, so we still have a strong relationship as well. Um, and then in terms of academic guides, I like to explain academic guide is basically being the RAs for the academic classroom. And so they're just upperclassmen students who are assigned to each FYS class and they're there um, to really help you um, understand the professor. A lot of times they've actually had the professor before, so they know kind of how they work and what the class will look like, as well as if you want your essays to be read over by someone or if you want help in different ways, you can definitely engage in that um, with your academic guide. That is my academic spiel. Thank you for bearing with me. Um, we can now head out of Scandera and go to the study abroad um, office and I'll talk about study abroad. Um, but our, on our walk to our study abroad office, I do love to talk about student senate. So we are one of the most active student bodies um, in terms of colleges in the nation. And one way you can really see that is through our student senate. Next year, our student senate will actually be comprised of about 58 students. So it's a very big group um, where we'll have one president and then we'll have several vice presidents 
I'm like the vice president of diversity, the vice president of external, internal affairs, et cetera, um, the treasurer. And then you're going to have a ton of committee positions. So we have every committee from campus life committee, um, campus aesthetics committee, curriculum committee, academic planning committee. I really could go on. But what's really nice about a committee is that's where shared governance really comes into play. And so each committee is comprised of staff, faculty, and students, and everyone does have an equal vote. So it's really cool to see like one of your admissions bosses or one of your um, professors in your class be in this committee together and you still have equal power. And I think it's a really special part about Pitzer. Um, and then the students in the committee are the liaisons to student senate. So they're the ones who go to all the student senate meetings um, and kind of express what's been going on in the various committees to keep everyone informed. Um, but I love being a part of Student Senate. I definitely recommend you do not have to be a senior by any means to get involved. We do save um, specific um, positions for every grade level. So you get the chance to be involved if you want. And it's a great way to kind of have a lasting impact on Pittsburgh's campus as well. Um, but right now we've reached our media study center. So we'll have our media, a lot of media studies classes over here as well as our study abroad office um, under West Hall, which is right here. Um, so about 53% of Pitzer students will study abroad sometime during their time at Pitzer. You can actually study abroad three times if that's, or up to three times if that's something you're interested in. Um, so you can do two semesters as well as one summer program, and you don't have to do those in order, so you can really spread them out throughout your time at Pitzer if that's something you'd like. Um, our study abroad office, uh, or study abroad program, excuse me, um, functions in two different ways. So we do have our indirect run programs, but we also have our direct run programs. So direct run programs are Pitzer based programs where Pitzer students are going with a group of Pitzer students to another country and they're staying in homestays there and taking language classes there. And they're being taught by Pitzer professors who are stationed in those countries. So it's really like you're picking up Pitzer and bringing it with you if you want that community feel. Um, we offer that to eight different locations and then in those locations you'll be like dispersed or getting to explore the local area as well or kind of like the neighboring countries sometimes um, but some of those include nepal costa rica vietnam different places in africa italy kind of tons of options to choose from if that's what you want um, a lot of them are also offered usually over the summer if that's something you want and you don't want to commit to a whole semester that's totally fine um, and then we have our indirect run program. So that's more of the traditional study abroad experience where you're going to another country, usually by yourself and going to another university and just living in their dorms, immersing yourself in their culture, taking their classes. So it's just, um, we have over 60 indirect run programs that we offer um, where we have great um, community partners and relationships with those different programs and you're just going there and you'll get credit for going there. Um, that's something that I did. So the summer after my freshman year, I actually went to Copenhagen and studied abroad for three weeks, which was amazing. I studied urban environmental sustainability, which was right up my alley at a great time. I definitely did not want to actually study abroad, excuse me, um, for a whole semester just because I really wanted to embrace the Pitzer experience, but it is fantastic if you do want to go. Um, but I really am grateful that I got the chance to study abroad for a little bit, which is really special as well. Um, but there is definitely something for everyone. We do have domestic run programs as well. So you can do an internship program in DC, as well as different um, exchange programs with different colleges in New York, if that's something you're interested in as well. Um, that's it for study abroad. I can now head over here um, and we'll head down to the green bike program. And as we, oh, sorry, one second. In a second, we'll head over to the green bike program. Um, but the green bike program, I will talk about in just a minute, but before I talk about the green bike program, I will talk about Connie. So Connie is our academic coach on campus. And so if you do have different learning disabilities or learning differences, you're more than welcome to meet with her. And even if you don't, you're more than welcome to meet with her. Um, but she will help you kind of organize your classes, get ready for the new weeks if you want. So I actually meet with her for 15 minutes. Um, every week I even meet with her over Zoom, which has really been helpful for me. And we kind of plan out what my homework schedule is gonna look like each week. Um, I also do have extra time on all of my testing. So I get double time. And so I've never actually taken a test in a room with other students in my classes before. I always actually get to take the test by myself in a room next to her with a noise machine, um, as well as a computer because I have typing privileges. Um, so if that's something you need, you can definitely make use of that. Um, that will be just directly in Atherton on the left-hand side of the screen is where her office is. Um, which is really wonderful. She gives you a really great like schedule template to organize all of your major assignments and she'll color code them, which is something I really enjoy. So she's a fantastic resource on our campus if you ever need to um, have just like another mentor on campus or anything like that. But right now we have arrived at the Green Bike Program. Um, so this is a student run initiative on our campus where students are fixing up bikes. So if your bike breaks for whatever reason, you're more than welcome to come here and get it fixed. We also do have um, two bike raffles throughout the year, one at the start of each semester. So if you're coming from a faraway place and you definitely don't wanna bring your bike across the country, no problem. They have bikes that have been restored for you to use and you can just enter the raffle and get a bike that way. 
Um, a fun fact about me is that I actually do not know how to ride a bike, so I never come here, but it's a really cool place. Nonetheless, as you can imagine, Copenhagen was very challenging at points as it is the bike mecca of the world, basically. Um, and we did have a mandatory bike trip and I had to tell my professor I didn't know how to participate. Um, and then he ended up renting us a Christiana bike. So that's a bike with a basket in front. And he had me sit in the basket and he rode me around Copenhagen, which wasn't embarrassing at all, um, but it was really funny. And I had to like record and vlog the whole thing, which was also a little mortifying, but still funny. And I have a funny story, um, but I could have gone to the green bike program and avoided that problem altogether because I do have learned to bike nights as well. Um, but we are a very wheel friendly school so we're going to have everything from scooters skateboards longboards rollerblades anything that has wheels on it you'll see pitzer students using our whole football team really loves scooters so you'll see like these big guys like going down the service road which is on the right hand side of the screen right here on these like little scooters and it's really funny but i do have a trusty razor scooter that i take everywhere with me um that's been perfectly fine and since we are a small consortium we don't have like a bus system that goes throughout the schools because it's just really easy to um travel on one of your kind of transportation devices of your choosing or walking is also fine. Um, but right here we have our garden and our chicken coop. So this is a really special place on our campus where we'll actually um, be planting different herbs and vegetables and fruits to be um, harvested for on-campus eateries on campus if that's something you're interested in doing. Um, we do have garden power hour, which will happen twice a week. Um, but that's when you can kind of volunteer in the garden and help out there. And we also do have our chicken coop, which is a great space if you're into chickens. Uh, I personally am not. I do have a bird phobia, but most people love that space and hanging out with the chickens. Sometimes you can like walk them, I think. Um, and I saw one guy one day like talking to the chickens. He was in the chicken coop, which seems like my worst nightmare, but he was um, giving the chickens words of encouragement and saying, you're beautiful, keep being you, things like that. And I thought that was really funny. Um, but right here we do have our free wall. Um, so this is the one uncensored space on campus where students can write whatever they want whenever they want. So it's a great example of freedom of speech and freedom of expression on our campus. Um, I really like to talk about it as our ever changing news station and that I think when you go to college it's super easy any college you go to to get really immersed in the culture and um, kind of forget about the world around us. But I think the free wall does a really great job of reminding us about the real world issues and that we're constantly facing in the world around us and how we can be better citizens of the world and really engage in dialogue about those topics and not just be focused in our little Claremont bubble, which I think is really important as well. Um, right here is our chicken coop, as I was talking about before. And then we'll head to our outdoor classroom as well as the Grove House up next. Um, and so as you can see, almost every day is nice in Southern California, but people really like to make use of the outdoor classroom and just any outdoor space that we have on campus and have classes outside. So that's where we use, or we spend a lot of time using our outdoor classroom space for that purpose as well. So the outdoor classroom is located right here. And then next to the outdoor classroom, we do have our Grove House. So the Grove House, which we'll see in a minute, um, is our oldest building on campus. And a really fun story about the Grove House is that it was actually bought for $1. Um, so the Grove House was originally in Claremont, which is our little village right outside of Pomona College. And it was being auctioned off and Pitzer students were the only people who came to the auction. So they were able to get the house for $1. Um, and then they really couldn't figure out how to get it back on campus. So then they broke it in half and brought it back on big trucks and with the architecture club and like a team of architects. Um, they built it back to its um, current state, which is really cool. And now it's a fully functioning house that we use all the time. Um, so you can see that right here. Um, but what's really cool about the Grove House is we also have a Grove House caretaker. So that's a senior on our campus who agrees to live in this space and kind of maintain it. And they'll get to um, say they own a house and they're only 22 years old, which is pretty cool for the year. Um, additionally, we do have another on-campus eatery inside the Grove House. Um, which is our Grove House Cafe. So you can eat there and you can also work there if you want an on-campus job. We also have our very famous knitting club that meets here as well as the Pitzer Advocates for um, survivors of sexual assault who host open, op open office hours if you ever want to talk to them. I mean, they're a really great support group on our campus as well. Um, this is the Grove House. We also have Libel, which is the on-campus record label that we have called Live, Live Your Best Life. And a lot of times they'll do a lot of performances um, at the Grove House just on this porch right here. And we also have a lot of great dinner and dialogue events with guest speakers that will invite to hang out with us at the Grove House to um, engage in different conversations. Um, but after the Grove House, in one second, um, we can head to the mounds. And so this is really the big hub and biggest grassy area of campus that we're about to head over to, as you can see right here. Um, and so I really like to talk about the mound specifically in terms of orientation adventure. So the orientation adventure program is something that is mandatory for all of our first year students. And next year, we will also have a sophomore orientation adventure program as well to invite them to our community. Um, but it all starts on the mounds. 
And so it's pretty unique in that a lot of other colleges, it's not mandatory to do a trip, but at Pitzer it is mandatory. Um, so you will start off with a four day trip. And so there's usually, it's gonna be a little different next year, but there are usually um, three different types of trips. There's front country trips, back country trips, and local trips. And so local trips, you're staying on campus at night for the four days, but then during the day, you're going on off campus excursions and activities, things like that. There's one called LA Arts and Food, Histories of Activism in LA. I went on one called SoCal Locale where we do outdoor activities in LA. Um, but if you're a little bit more adventurous than I am, you're more than welcome to go on one of the front country or back country trips. So front country trips include beach camping, which is really popular um, where you camp on the beach for four days. And then back country trips are things like going to Catalina Island and doing kayaking and hiking there. Um, we also have a rock climbing away trip and a biking trip. So if you want that outdoor experience, there's definitely something for you too. Um, what's really cool about our OA trips is that they're all student run. So you're gonna have four to five student leaders and then you're a group of, a, of about 16 students. Again, next year will look a little bit different. Um, but in those like kind of small intimate groups, you're able to make a lot of cool friends. Some of my best friends are from my orientation adventure trip as a freshman. And then when I was an or orientation adventure leader as a sophomore, I became best friends with some of my OABs too. And now they're like, really, I couldn't imagine living without them. So I think it's really nice to make friends throughout that process as well. And then after that, you'll go back to campus for more of a traditional um, orientation where you learn about campus layout and offerings and clubs and things like that, which is also a lot of fun. Um, but right here we have Mead. So this is the last upperclassman dorm I was talking about. So this is the fourth one. Um, mostly juniors and seniors will be living in that space because it's more of an apartment style, suite style living and that you're living with six to eight people um, and you're sharing that space together. So if you do have a friend group and you want to live with them your senior year, it's really fun to live in Mead. Um, I actually don't have a friend group on campus, which is also completely fine. I have a lot of individual friends. So personally, it works better for me to live in West. Um, but if that's something you want to do, it's definitely a possibility and a really cool space to live. Um, right now we'll head into our academic quad. Um, so this is where all of our classes are held besides the ones held in some in Atherton and some in Scandera. Um, but it's really nice that all of them are really close to each other. Um, so you can get to class very quickly. Some people will actually have the same, like all their classes in the same classroom, which is pretty funny. And throughout this space in this, like, um, as you can see, we have a lot of like cacti and that's a part of our outdoor art installation called sorry, art installation called California Backwards, um, which is just an opportunity for us to honor the native people who were here before us, who are the Tongva. Um, in this space, we also do have our pit stop cafe. So that's one of our, that's our third on-campus eatery that is not the dining hall. This one is run by our dining hall staff. Um, and it's really great to eat there, catch a bite to eat. I always go um, on Fridays before my Friday morning class and get like a sandwich and a coffee. And you're also welcome to invite your professors to come to the pit stop. So if you want to have like an extra extended office hours or just connect with your advisor, you can be like, oh, let's get coffee at the pit stop. And they'll always say yes. And you can engage in conversation with them in that space as well. Additionally, at Pitzer, we don't have departments, but instead we have field groups. So instead of having an econ department or a psych department, um, a field group is comprised of different professors from different disciplines um, whose offices are all next to each other. So uh, example of that is that my freshman year, my creative writing professor and my econ professor actually shared an office. So when I went in for office hours um, for econ, my quirky creative writing professor was right there, which was really funny. Um, so we'd all like talk together and it was really a collaborative environment. And that is really to promote interdisciplinary learning. And that let's say, since you have a field group, you have different interests going on in that field group between the various professors. So let's say you have an econ professor and an organizational studies professor. The org studies professor might talk about the various like works they're working on, and the econ professor would talk about um, the diff an, like an organizational example in their econ class to kind of bridge those two subjects together, which is really nice. Um, additionally, this is Scott Hall right here, um, which is home to three different resources. So I'll just talk about them to you outside. Um, but those will include our Career Services Center, our Office of Student Affairs, and our Community Engagement Center. So the offices of Office of Student Affairs will help you with any student type need you might have. So I personally go there for my learning accommodations. Um, the Career Services Office is a really a fantastic office. Um, they'll help you with any type of career or internship help you might need. So they'll help you with resumes, cover letters, networking, things like that. We have a great program called Handshake, which is our version of LinkedIn, uh, where you can connect with different alum and just general like organizations and companies to look for internships and jobs. 
We also do have a great program that's called the Winter Job Shadowing Program, where you actually get to shadow a Pitzer alum or parent in your local area and see how the Pitzer education can really turn into a career path. I was actually very appreciative that it was online this year um, was because we were able to kind of go to places that were in our hometown. So I was able to shadow someone who works for Adidas in their CSR, Corporate Social Responsibility Department, as a lawyer um, and like diversity, equity, and inclusion, which was super fascinating. And I shadowed him on Zoom for a week, which was a lot of fun. Um, and then he kind of connected me to other people in his office. So it's a very productive program um, where you also get to talk about what Pitzer means to you about with people who really know Pitzer very well and can understand that, um, which is really special too. We also do have a program called Sage Hens Getting Ahead. So that's a six week program that you're welcome to participate in um, where they'll at the Career Services Office, they'll really explain how to write a resume, network, um, cover letter, all those things, but more in depth. And then at the end, you'll actually get to do real networking and specifically with people in your major. So I told them I was an organizational studies major. Then they found a bunch of alum who are also org studies majors and I could get to see exactly where they landed and how that could kind of correlate to my career path as well. Um, additionally, we do have the Community Engagement Center in here as well, so that will help you with the 40 hours I was talking about before in terms of community engagement to graduate. Um, they also do run our ethics training program, so we don't do any work with the, our community partners before doing an ethics training to really ensure that we're um, being respectful of the people we're working with and know our positionality. Um, to have that experience and on average Pacific students and faculty do complete over 100,000 hours of community service or community engagement every year, so it's an office that we utilize all the time. Um, but right now, as we walk to the dining hall, I'll talk a little bit about shared resources. Um, so since we are a part of consortium, we do have a ton of shared resources. I'll actually just pull up quickly, as you can see a map of the consortium, which is right here. So in this purple section, that will be where all of our shared resources are. Um, so that will include our library, our health center. Um, here's a picture of the library right here. Um, our health center, our different therapists and counselors, our bookstore, everything like that. Um, so it's very easily accessible. It usually takes about like seven minutes or five minutes on a scooter. So it's not bad at all, um, but it's another great way to engage with the rest of the consortium as well. Our library is huge. Um, so there's enough room for everyone throughout the consortium. It's like two buildings and it has over 2 million books and there's plenty of fun study spaces um, to study in and work with like groups and group projects. Every floor actually gets quieter and quieter. So the fourth floor, you can hear that ringing sound in the back of your ear, um, but the first floor is really um, communal where you can do a lot of group work. You can rent out rooms for free for your groups. They have like projectors where you can project your projects. They have little things they just installed under some of the desks for your feet where you can like move your feet back and forth. And we also have treadmill desks too. So there's really something for everyone. And it's a space I love to go on in um, too, especially on the weekends, just to spend the whole day at the library. I just like love the views and like being with the rest of the consortium in that space as well. Um, additionally, we do have a lot of um, consortium involvement in terms of student engagement. So at Pitzer, we do have about 50 clubs, but throughout the consortium, we're going to have over 200 clubs. So you're more than welcome to invo be involved in just Pitzer clubs or 5C clubs or both. It's most popular to do both and to engage with everyone. Um, but we do have a clubs fair that will go on at the beginning of the year that's very similar to like the Pitch Perfect like club scene in the movie. Um, but it's a really great opportunity um, to sign up for things. And what's really nice about, I think, college and as opposed to high schools that you don't have to stay in everything that you signed up for. So like I did things my freshman year that I'm no longer involved in. I signed up for archery club and then I went to one meeting and I decided it wasn't for me and I joined a heels dancing class. So you really do have a ton of flexibility in terms of clubs and doing things you're really passionate about and not just doing things because you have to do it. And I think that's a big lesson I've learned at Pitzer is you do everything because you actually want to do it and not because anyone else is telling you to. Um, and I still <laughs> maintain a very busy schedule. So it does kind of prove that people really care about the community and kind of helping it run as much as possible. Since I do love to say that Pitzer students run the place a lot of the times in terms of we just have a lot of different leadership opportunities and positions on our campus. Um, but right here is our Keck Science Center. The Science Center is shared with Scripps, and so it's just a really great um, way to engage with other consortium students and just get more resources and that any um, STEM student at Pitzer will take all of their science classes in this building. Um, so my biology advisor that I was talking about before does work here, so that is the one time I would come here since I'm not a STEM student, but it's a really great place to engage in research and just um, about a central location for all of our students as well. 
Um, but right now we can head into our dining hall. Um, and so this is the only dining hall at Pitzer. Throughout the consortium, we do have about seven dining halls. Not about, we have exactly seven dining halls. Um, every college has one dining hall, except for Pomona that has three. That's because they're a larger college and they're also home to Oldenburg, which is our language dining hall. And so in there, you can only speak a different language. So language is not a requirement at Pitzer, but if you do decide to take a language, which is definitely encouraged if that's something you want to do, um, you'll often be required to do like 10 Oldenburg lunches where you have to practice your um, conversational skills with other people in your class in kind of a more social setting. Um, but you're more than welcome to eat at any of the dining halls. Pitzer is cur well, not currently, has always been my favorite dining hall. Um, and we do have an app that will show you all of the different um, menus for all of the schools. So you never have to be worried about like not knowing what you're getting into when you go to the dining hall. And I really like to stress that dining hall culture is super special and that all of our tables are really big. So it's almost impossible to just eat with one other person. Um, oftentimes if I go to the dining hall with one person, we have to sit at a 10 person table and then the table will fill up with people we do know and people we don't know. And it's just a really nice way to engage in community in that way and make new friends. I always like to tell a story that one day my friend um, told me like, oh, Melina, like, let's go sit with the football team. And I was like, oh, why would I do that? Um, but I did it and I had a great time. I made a lot of friends on the football team who I'm still friends with now. Um, and it was really a great way to meet new people. So I think the world is your oyster um, at Pitzer. And I really like to stress that, um, sorry, um, I feel like Pitzer, as one of my professors said, is a case study and that you can like really push the social boundaries of just like talking to strangers and seeing what happens. Um, so that's also a really fun activity to do at Pitzer. Um, and then right here, I like to quickly orient us. So this is a map of Southern California. So we're about 35 miles from Los Angeles. We do, as we said in the panel, have a train that will take you into LA. I can't even drive. That has not been a problem for me. Um, the train is a very nice option, as well as all upperclassmen can have cars can have cars on campus if you want, but freshmen cannot, um, which is totally fine because there are enough people who have cars who can take you around places. And we also have a great POA program, which is our Pitzer Outdoor Adventure Program, which will lead um, trips all of the time um, to our surrounding area, to Mount Baldy, to go skiing, to go kayaking, to go camping on the beach, things like that. So if you wanna get outdoors and engage in that community, you can definitely do so. And one of my favorite ones is the pizza hike where you actually go to Mount Baldy and you can only go if you're wearing like a funky costume, like a banana suit or a cowboy outfit, something like that. And then they all eat pizza together at sunset on the top of the mountain. So they have a lot of fun trips that aren't just like hiking through the woods um, to get you really engaged and kind of like having that fun quirky experience. Um, but right now we're headed through Holding Gardens and then I'll wrap up my tour at admissions. Um, but this is actually where I was at when I toured um, Pitzer as a junior in high school. I turned to my mom and I could say I could really see myself here. And after touring like 30 colleges, she was crying because she was impressed that I'd said that about any school and also was sad because she didn't want to lose me to California. Um, but as I said before, we got a lot closer since going to college. We FaceTime all the time. It, the power of FaceTime is really crazy. Like I can be walking to class and I'll just FaceTime her and check in. She'll call me when she's in Chico shopping for like clothing and doesn't know which one to buy. So I think that really helps kind of break a lot of boundaries and hasn't been a problem at all. And I still go home every so often to visit throughout the breaks and things like that. Sometimes I will stay on campus um, if it's a shorter break and hang out with people here because there are a lot of East Coasters who will also stick around as well. Um, but now I'll be wrapping up my tour um, and I'll end with why I chose Pitzer as well as why I really like Pitzer and why I like to stay at Pitzer and continue to enjoy it every day. Um, but thank you so much for coming on this tour in the last hour. Um, but for me, I really wanted to play, to be at a place where I was seen and a part of a community. And I think I definitely have achieved that at Pitzer. Um, specifically, I think Pitzer teaches you how to be important if you want to be important. And you have this like wild and crazy life that everyone is just excited to hear about, which I think is really special. I think the biggest thing Pitzer has taught me so far is how to live my life. I think in high school, I was really focused on my grades and the resume and the extracurriculars and things like that. Um, but what's really special about Pitzer is that you're doing everything because you want to do it and because it makes you happy and you're leading with happiness and you're not leading with pretentious natures or things like that or competition and the only person you're competing with is yourself um, and with that you just get a lot of autonomy and power I was telling my intersectionality class the other day that I feel like the most powerful person in my life and you're the most powerful person in your life and at Pitzer you really do get to cultivate that in really cool ways um, but thank you all for coming on the tour I'll quickly show you all of our contact information, which is right here. So if you want to contact us, you're more than welcome to in any of these locations, as well as we do have my email at the bottom of the left-hand side of the screen. And you can email me with any questions. I do check email more than social media, so I will get back to you for sure. But thank you for coming.
Thank you so much, Melena. That was an amazing tour. We are going to go into a break for about 10 minutes. So we will see you back in around 10 minutes for our faculty panel. Thank you again, Melena. Hello everyone and welcome back from our break. I hope you're able to get some water and stretch a little bit. My name is Donna Xie, like I um, introduced myself at the beginning, but in case we have any new attendees, um, I am an admission counselor here at Pitzer College. I use he, him pronouns, um, and I'll be serving as our moderator today for our four wonderful faculty who have joined us for our panel today. Uh, let's go around and introduce ourselves. Um, Professor Afuso, can you go next? Sure. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Professor Elizabeth Afuso. Um, I teach media studies here at Pitzer College, and I also direct the Intercollegiate Media Studies program, which is the five college uh, media studies major. So if anyone has questions about uh, intercollegiate programs, I'm happy to answer those in particular. Hi, I'm Nancy Williams. My pronouns are she and her, and I teach chemistry at the Keck Science Department, which is the joint science department for Claremont McKenna Scripps and Pitzer Colleges. Hi, everyone. I'm Stephanie Guillermo. I'm an assistant professor of psychology. Uh, this is my fourth year at Pitzer College, um, and so I am a social psychologist, so I teach things like social psychology um, and other um, courses that I'm sure I'll talk about later, but I'm happy to answer any questions related to the psychology major or psychology research. Hi everyone, I'm uh, Dr. Darren Brown. I'm also an assistant professor of psychology at Pitzer. This is my second year at Pitzer and um, my research focuses, uh, I'm trained as a cognitive neuroscientist. So I do a lot of neuroimaging, um, looking at a brain activation for emotion and reward learning and some clinical research as well. So the first question I have for all of you is, what is a typical Pitzer class look like? I guess I could, I could answer that uh, or go first. Um, so my, my classes tend to oscillate uh, pretty dramatically between uh, strict lecture courses, such as a, an intro to psychology course where, um, you know, it's, mainly me talking and we play games and whatnot, um, all the way to very technical skill-based courses. So uh, courses relating to statistics or programming or um, uh, da uh, data set analysis and things like that. And I also uh, uh, do seminar cell classes, which are small classrooms where we read papers and it's uh, kind of student-led and we just have discussions about the scientific articles that we, and what they mean and why they're good and why they're bad. So all over the spectrum. Yeah, I would say in, in chemistry, there's a wide variety. In a way, some of my classes look pretty typical for a science class in that we're talking about the same kind of things you might do anywhere. But I think we have a pretty different approach to tech science in that we are very problem focused. We really try like to put students in groups and get them to solve problems together. Um, and in doing that, we've completely flipped the classroom over this year so that lectures are all pre-recorded so that you watch those on your own time, so that you're working in small groups with other students and with the professor moving around between, at the moment, virtual tables, but hopefully real physical tables in person soon, um, teaching you to learn by doing. Um, in my, my upper division course in organic chemistry, we actually read a, um, a memoir of a scientist about his, his own life journey and, and what brought him there. And because he talks a lot about his own identities and how those meshed with his developing identity as a scientist, it's a chance for us to talk about how our own identities interact with our own developing identities as scientists, um, which is a really special thing to be able to do with juniors and seniors who are majoring in chemistry. Elizabeth, are you able to share a little? I can go. Yeah, yeah, I can go. Um, uh, sorry, I'm muting myself. Um, I uh, I teach in media studies. We have really two kind of core types of courses. I teach media history and media theory, um, and on topics like social media, celebrity, um, 
what else do I teach? Oh, cultural politics of self-care, things like that, um, which I co-teach with my colleague, Ruti Talmor. Um, and in those classes, it's typically a kind of mix of lecture and discussion. So typically on uh, the first session of the week, I'll do some framing, uh, frame things up historically, um, and then position the readings. And then on Wednesday, we'll do a discussion section, for example, and that'll be kind of student-led discussion work. We also have screening periods in those courses. We all, in the other side of media studies is production-based. So um, in those courses, students will make uh, short videos, They'll make photography projects, game, video games, um, graphic design based work, web based work, things like that. And those those classes are really more practice praxis classes where people are doing hands on work. Um, so we, we're really a kind of theory practice major at our core. And obviously this year with the virtual format class yeah. working very differently. Um, well, so yeah. We, we shipped equipment around the world. So uh, students got packages of equipment. Um, we are running like, it feels like almost like a FedEx distribution center of some kind uh, with equipment. Um, but we were still able to, you know, it looks a little different than it has in the past, but we were still able to get students, um, you know, the equipment that they needed. And, and actually they've been making really beautiful work. So um, it's actually been kind of exciting to see how flexible how flexible people are. Sometimes constraints really help the creative process. So um, that's been something interesting. And, and we've been able to get work that we wouldn't have gotten before because students are um, all around the world. And so that provides access to different subjects for their projects. Yeah, and for any other professors here, what has a typical virtual Pitzer class looked like? For the virtual format, um, I've definitely made use of the breakout rooms, uh, especially for the discussion style classes or seminars. Um, it's a little bit unwieldy with a bunch of you know boxes on the on the screen, but I find that students are really enjoying the small breakout rooms um, because it's a chance for them to discuss with their classmates, but in a more manageable format. Um, in terms of lectures, uh, there's a little bit of different approaches. So for my stats class, I will usually record lectures where it's some of the key points where they may want to pause and take notes available to them. Uh, but it's kind of similar to what Nancy was saying, I'll use the synchronous class time for them to work with each other or work more hands on with statistical problems or computations. That way I'm there to kind of address any questions that come up, but they're working more hands on in the synchronous format, whereas the lectures are pre recorded. So those are available to them kind of at their own convenience. I think for our admitted students, they've been hearing a lot, definitely from our admission office and throughout the admitted student program this past month from students about how close-knit the Pitzer community is, um, how closely professors and students work together, but we haven't heard from faculty yet. So what is the faculty's perspective on the student to faculty relationship at Pitzer? It's a really unusual place because the distance between students and faculty is really reduced. I mean, obviously, our physical distance is vast at the moment because we're all moving through Zoom screens. And every time I talk to you, it bounces off a satellite that's in orbit. Um, but in terms of the, the degree of one on one contact or one on small group contact that I see in in Pitzer classes is really remarkable. And it's why I want to teach at a place like this. Um, I don't want to lecture to a hall of 300. Um, I know what that's like, and it's it's not what I want to make my life's work. I want to work individually with students and have a chance to have that kind of a mentoring relationship that you just don't get in a bigger place. Or at least most people don't get to have it in a bigger place, right? The occasional student might be able to have a really close relationship with a professor, but here I think everybody can have it with all of their professors. And it's really great because you get to know them not just as a student, but their outside interests as well, which helps in terms of, you know, I have seniors right now and I know what they want to do when they graduate and go on the job market. And I know what their outside passions are um, as well. I have a student yesterday who met with me who got a job he was really excited about and I wrote his recommendation letter, but I also know that he loves rock climbing and, you know, you get to know the students as people, not just as students. And I think that's really amazing. 
um, in terms of getting to know them, but then also in the classroom, it helps as well when you feel like you have a closer personal relationship rather than just, oh, I graded your paper last week and you're a name in my Sakai roster. Um, you get to really know, you know what their true passions are and that really helps to get to know them as students and as people. Um, I, th I, would, I would echo what everyone has said already, but I think, you know, one of the things about going, to, I went to big universities, um, big, you know, big research universities where the classes are large. And um, one of the things that struck me when I got to Pitzer is that the space is so intimate that you really encounter the divide between faculty and students is really different. Faculty do eat in the dining hall. Um, in fact, we get a free lunch every week, so we all take advantage of that. Um, and, you know, we're in spaces like the coffee bar, um, and the gym, I take Pilates classes on campus with students, right? So we're not just seeing them in the classroom environment, we're seeing them, you know, in ways that are more casual, that allow for a more social type of conversation. Um, and because our majors are small, we see the same students over and over again. So, um, you know, you cultivate relationship with students, I'll have students in intro and then, you know, move through um, upper division classes and really get to know them for a very long period of time. Um, and I do keep up with a lot of students after they graduate, you know, um, I've had I've had dinner in Copenhagen with alums. Uh, I've, you know, I see people when I go home to New York. Um, one of my former advice is coming to my wedding. Um, she and I are now close friends uh, several years after she's graduated. Um, and those are not relationships that I certainly had as an undergraduate, um, you know, at a, at a big university. So I think that's something that we can really do differently um, in this environment. Have you got, have you, uh, sorry, Nancy, go ahead. No, I was I was just going to say something that's really special about that, and and maybe Darren, you've seen this as well, is that there's something very hard to do, which is to fail in front of your professors, and that's where the most learning happens is when you try to do something and you don't succeed, or when you try to to think about how you might solve a problem, and it's not the right answer, and to be able to do that in front of somebody is the best way to learn and the best way to grow as, as a scientist and as a learner. And that can't really happen if there isn't an enormous amount of trust and a feeling that that person loves you and wants you to succeed. And that can happen in an intimate environment. Um, and I, I really appreciate that about this, this place. Yeah, and uh, just to echo what everyone has said, um, I, you know, a lot of my uh, education was in big universities and I felt just like a face in a crowd, and um, and someone couldn't even make out the the my any part of my face because there were five hundred other faces around, and and in graduate school, you know, they train you to be a teacher if you take the opportunity to do so, and they train you to be a researcher first and foremost, but they don't really train you or highlight the uh, an advising component or a uh, a relationship that can be built between the person who may be doing the job you want to get to and yourself and that's a really important relationship to build if you i tell every student if you if you want to know where to go find the person who's doing it and ask them hey how'd you get here and at Pitzer, I was just thrilled to have students build these relationships with me and, 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 and they're encouraged to, and I'm encouraged to, and it makes the classroom so much better. And it makes my, my research better because I get to know students who have various histories and identities and thoughts. And we can't talk about the brain, for example, without also talking about the people whose brains they're in their heads. So yeah, the relationship between my students have made me a better teacher, a better professor, and hopefully, you know, a better, better, better person. Have any of you have had a memorable moment with a student or an advice that you that kind of encapsulates that Pitzer moment? Really making you think back. So many. <laughs> I mean, what what month goes by that I haven't had something like that? Um, I I have had so many students flop down in the chair in my office and come out to me, or um, just express their their fear that what they thought they were going to do in college is not what they think they want to do going forward and worried about how to talk to their parents about that, or they, um, they really love 
what they're taking their classes in, but they're afraid that they're not good enough. Um, and whether I've ever experienced something like that. And of course, we've all had imposter syndrome. We know exactly what that is. And so we can talk to them about our, our own experiences of realizing that, yes, in fact, we're good enough and let the world tell you that you're not because it's not going to be shy about it. Um, you have to believe that um, that your own internal demons are, are lying to you because that's what internal demons do. I have so many of those moments, um, but also just times at which I've been able to check in with a student and seeing them at different points in their development and seeing them build their confidence and their strengths and their curiosities and develop new interests they didn't have before. Um, sometimes the hardest conversations for the students and the most joyous ones for me are the ones where they come to me and they're they're just downcast because they say they don't want to be a chemist because they've discovered this other thing they love. And I love that they want to come to me and tell me that, but I'm sad that they think that I'm going to be sad about that. I'm just thrilled that they found their passion. Moving on. Uh, oh, Darren, did you have something you wanted to add? Um, we have a question here on what type of research opportunities are there for students um, and what does mentoring students in undergraduate research look like? I've had really amazing experiences working with undergraduates. Um, I feel like I've, I've just been so lucky to work with really wonderful students. Um, first off, the process at least in my experience happens pretty organically. They um, kind of get to know you in terms of what your research is about. And so for me personally, my research looks at the social cognitive mechanisms underlying stereotyping and prejudice, particularly as it pertains to race and ethnicity. And so students who are also passionate about those issues, um, they come to my office or they'll send me an email or meet me in Zoom nowadays and say, hey, I wanna get involved. And there are different levels. So some students are research assistants and kind of help me with various tasks of um, data collection or um, designing studies, other things like that. But I also have students who really take the initiative to take a more independent role um, and become more of a research collaborator. And so, by that, I mean, we work together to design studies, to come up with research questions and to carry out the research. And so I've had students who um, have presented at professional conferences their, their own research. Um, I have a co-authored publication with a Pitzer student and I have a couple articles that are under review for publication right now. One co-authored with a Pitzer alum, one co-authored with the current Pitzer a senior. So there are definitely opportunities for um, not just assisting with research, but also also becoming a more independent researcher as well. Um, and so to really facilitate that process and be, you know, um, dedicate the time as a mentor that's necessary for that, one amazing opportunity at Pitzer is independent studies. So I will often engage in independent studies with this student. So we construct basically a course around their research ideas to help them make progress and have consistent um, progress towards their research study or um, other project that they're working on. And uh, Pitzer students are just so amazing that it makes the mentoring job really easy because um, Pitzer students are just great. Yeah, what Stephanie was talking about really makes me think about um, what I've, I've seen so many times, which is the, the arc of a student researcher as they work uh, with you for a period of time, that the way that they develop and become more independent and start asking their own questions and those questions become more sophisticated and the way that they start designing their experiments so that even when they don't do what they expect, that we learn something from that experiment just grows and grows and grows. And it's so exciting to watch students develop as thinkers and as researchers and as explorers of the world around them. It's, it's just really exciting and rewarding. Um, in, in media studies, we have a lot of students who also um, work with faculty on their artistic endeavors. So we have students working um, on documentary film research for different faculty members, um, editing, things of that nature. So the kind of like practical hands-on stuff that you might do in media studies. Um, and those relationships usually get cultivated organically. Like a student will take documentary media and then start, you know, kind of working um, with faculty member and maybe do an internship. In, in media studies, we have an internship course 
Um, and sometimes students work in the industry, but sometimes they work, you know, in more of a faculty context. Um, we also have a lot of students in media studies who do are interested in curation, or work in pits or art galleries, um, and you know, work on developing out skills of curation there. Um, I personally mentor a lot of uh, students who are kind of on a grad student track, I would say. They're you know, looking toward a PhD in media studies. Um, and we work together on their writing, developing out um, you know, their thesis, and you know, really thinking about their research questions and how they can address them. And, and we do do some mentoring around conferences and student publications as well in that area. And then you know, uh, with those students, I continue to mentor them as they go into grad school and see them at, at academic conferences and things like that. So that's kind of a fun, fun thing to see as it, it moves into the professional sector as the years go by. Yeah, so it sounds like research is very prevalent at Pitzer, uh, which I think is a common misconception when students are deciding between large research universities and small liberal colleges is that there aren't research opportunities. I think we just proved that to not be the case. Um, I, if you have any other questions about research, feel free to use the Q&A box on the bottom of your screen and we can get to them. Um, but for the, our professors here, what is your favorite thing about teaching at Pitzer? I can uh, start. Um, so I, I'm going to cheat. I have two. Um, the first is I, I actually grew up uh, near uh, in the Claremont area. And so I uh, and I worked in the Claremont Village, which is like a shopping center outside of Claremont and uh, for many years. And I, I would always see Pitzer students as being sort of special. Um, from the Kahoot Tech concert that I used to sneak into when I was a kid to, you know, just like the campus itself was always beautiful and there was just something special about the students. Each, each college has its sort of own feel and Pitzer students were, you know, like special and, and Pitzer itself because a lot of universities, they will have social justice sort of added on to it. Um, a psych for example, a psychology department in who knows where would hire us like someone who focuses on social justice. Thus, they're like, oh, good. And it's Pitzer, the bedrock of the college is social justice that we built the college on top of. And so in almost every aspect of my day to day and my relationships is this uh, inclusiveness and this um, ability to talk about these complex social issues and and to you know we we like cry together and we get frustrated together and we celebrate together in these ways and so that is really special to me for uh, teaching at uh, a part of teaching at Pitzer. And the second is, of course, you know, my students are great. I am so tired of hanging out with uh, neuroscientists from Harvard. I want to talk to people who are not jaded and not uh, pigeonholed, who are excited about everything and how things like a part of the brain is also what that can tell us about culture. I mean, that is such an exciting thing that I really didn't see in other places. And so those those two things are my favorite pieces of Pitzer, for sure. One thing that I love, and I always tell students this, and I think they only half believe me, but it's totally true, is that I learn from them. You know, of course I'm teaching them, but I learn so much and I could teach the same paper, you know, in four different classes and each time students come up with a new um, view of something or a new critique or a new way to look at the research or the concepts in the paper and even i'm like wow it's the 10th time i think i've read that and i and i never got that before from that from that paper or from that article and so i truly learn from them and they come with such interdisciplinary and unique backgrounds so that it does allow that learning process to unfold and we read something and a student will mention something about it or make a connection to another class they're taking and i'm like wow you know i, I just learned something new today and that's really exciting for me Um, yeah, I would echo what everyone has said. I, I'm always amazed by the creativity of the students. Um, you know, 
sometimes when we get to senior thesis, the projects that they come up with are absolutely incredible. Um, you know, a few years ago, a student uh, made a video game about working in an Amazon distribution center that was just incredible. And you, you know, it, you, you could feel the kind of anxiety building when you weren't hitting the pace marks that you were supposed to be, and you know, things that allow me to really experience, uh, you know, ex things that I wouldn't normally in my in my regular life. Um, I also, I had a really fun experience a couple of years ago that really, I think made me, kind of put me in the student boat at Pitzer. Um, I, uh, uh, one of our linguistics faculty members had an uh, had an injury and had to get surgery. And uh, it was a media and linguistics class. And I got asked to take over the class and then co-teach it from the from when she came back. And uh, I'd never taken a linguistics class before. It was an upper division linguistics class. I had no background in linguistics. And, but I had a lot of background in media, so that was okay. We were okay at that level. Um, and I basically learned linguistics from the students and it was thrilling and so much fun. Um, and you know, they were they were game to teach me also, right? Um, and to run through uh, core concepts that I didn't know because I hadn't taken intro to linguistics and things like that. Um, and you know, I got kind of the experience of being in the classroom as a student, which was really, really uh, fun. And I, we, I think we're probably going to teach the class again for real, you know, not as a, as a planned experiment, not as a, uh, but it was, it was great. And I had a really good time and it, it, it taught me how special I think the students are, you know, how smart they are, how willing they are to, to share and to be intellectually open and curious and, and game also for various things that might come up. One, one thing that I really appreciate, and I'll kind of tell the story with an anecdote, is the way in which Pitzer students sort of live in an environment where they are steeped in people who are really smart about making change in the world, that they really, they get that in their bones. Um, and I had a student some years ago who did not strike me in any way as an activist student. They were just, you know, doing their work, keeping their head down, getting their classes done, doing their research. Um, and then they graduated and went off and um, worked at, at LA County Museum of Art for a while, LACMA, and then went off and were took a job for a year and then decided they wanted to go back to grad school and they were going to do some art conservation work. And, um, and I kind of lost track of this student, but I, I ran into them at, at a conference a couple of years later. And, um, and they said, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm now a, a graduate student in this completely different group. I'm doing a completely different sort of science. And, um, and they had, had undergone transition in the meantime. And this last year, when they, they kind of saw a moment where all of the scientific journals were saying, yes, we want to be part of social change and social justice too. And most people just kind of rolled their eyes at the scientific journals saying, but Irving said, I see a way to actually capitalize on this. One thing that we've been asking scientific journals to do for ages is to allow people to retroactively change their names on publications. So I'm gonna round up all the smart people I know in all of my circles and push the journals all at once to try to get them to do this. And he was really smart about getting together cisgender women who had changed their names in marriage and uh, trans people who had changed their name or people who had taken on a different name when they moved between countries um, for cultural reasons and really hit the journals from all angles and got the journals to start making changes and then was able to go around to all of these other journals and saying, we've got the Royal Society of Chemistry agreeing to do this and they're putting this in place in the next 60 days. How quickly can you roll your change out? And one by one, just over the last several months, we've watched these journals tumble like dominoes as they've just gone through and said, this thing that they've always said is absolutely impossible, they're all lining up to do it. And they're figuring out how to go back and retroactively change footnotes in all of the old journal articles, going back to the dawn of the, the papers and, and make those changes. Because the student just recognized the moment and had seen enough examples of how to make change around them through their Pitzer experience that they will, were able to recognize the moment and capitalize on it. And, and I, I see that in our students. Those are all great examples. Thank you for sharing. Um, what I think Pitzer is a unique place and the way we teach classes are unique as well. Do you have any examples of a classroom uh, experience that 
may not be what people tend to think of when they first think of a college class. I'll, I'll go with that. And um, just something that came to mind is, um, so Pitzer has, I'm sure you saw on the tour, so many wonderful outdoor areas. Um, and we actually have something we call the outdoor classroom. So there was one day we got to class and it was such a beautiful day out. And the students, I heard them like, oh, it's so nice out. It's so nice out. And I'm like, let's go outside. <laughs> and then we just walked right on over to the outside classroom and sat there and got to discuss um, the course content in a beautiful space. Uh, so that was nice. Or other times when I have them working in small groups for something, um, I say, do you want to go work on the mounds? Let's go. And then we go outside and some sit at the pit stop, others sit on the mounds and I'm walking back and forth and some students are like, what's going on? And I'm like, oh, we're, we're having class right now. So um, it's kind of nice to switch up that space just because I think it also helps them to, you know, see things more creatively or just change up the environment for something new and exciting. Um, so I've definitely had classroom or class outside um, in unique and beautiful spaces. Um, we, we're able, because of the class sizes, which are typically fairly small, right? Um, most media studies classes are 20 students or under. Um, we're able to do a lot of field trips. So we do, um, we, Pitzer has va these vans, these like not very cool Honda Odyssey vans that you can check out. Um, and drive, you know, to take, take a group of students to different places and students can be approved to drive them too. Um, and I've taken, we've taken students, you know, to the Broad, to LACMA, to production houses around Los Angeles, like lighting, um, rental spaces, things like that. Um, I've taken students to the movies on many occasions, um, to the IMAX in Ontario and my screen cultures class. And um, I've promised the students in my intro to media studies class who've never met each other from last semester for the Zoom class that we're going to the drive-in when we get back. Uh, uh, Pitzer is very close to one of the last remaining drive-ins in America, the Mission Tiki, which is a tiki themed drive-in. Um, and it's been doing an incredible business in the pandemic. It's actually packed if you go. Um, if you haven't been and you live nearby, I recommend you do. Um, uh, so, you know, we're gonna we're gonna do that when we get back on campus. And, you know, that's something that's enabled by this, the size of the community and by the resources that we have um, that we're able to do things like that. You know, that would be very hard to pull off in a 300 person class, but it's very easy to pull off in a class with 20 students. Um, we basically only need two vans, so we'll be ready to go. Um, so that's just an example of the stuff that uh, we're allowed to do with Pitzer. And I teach outside too, I like that. I like doing that if I can. Although in media studies, we sometimes have to be in front of the screen. So we're not as lucky. <laughs> we've, we've gone to the Griffith Observatory, which is pretty great. Yeah, I definitely miss the outdoor classroom, just walking around campus and seeing professors outside. And uh, hopefully for media studies with how this past year is and with the outdoor furniture committee, they're going to start building more outdoor classrooms that are equipped with technology. So then you can actually teach your classes outside. Uh, I think that will be a great addition. Um, another unique thing about Pitzer is that we are part of an intentional consortium. And we have students from the other Claremont colleges that attend Pitzer classes. So what is it like to have students from all five C's in your classes? Is it noticeable? What are the differences? How do Pitzer students stand out? I'm happy to speak to that if, if you want to. I, I, so I chair intercollegiate media studies, which is, I believe, we're the largest intercollegiate major, um, certainly the biggest in the humanities. We ha we're graduating next year. We'll have 80 students in senior seminars. So we are we're quite large um, uh, from across the five colleges. Um, we have students from all five, um, even Harvey Mudd, which has been a little bit of a journey to get them. But they are they are now on board um, and, uh, you know, in, in the case of media studies, it's the exact same major across the five colleges. I like to say we kind of exist in the air. Um, we have a physical space at Pitzer that's technically five college space. So it's a resource that any student from any of the five colleges can use. Um, and our classes do typically have a mixture of students. I do think Pitzer students are like the funkiest. Um, I think that's how I would describe them. Um, you know, and, uh, which I, I love. I love that about them. I love how stylish they are. I love that, you know, come to class with, you know, kind of, um, you know, more, they are political, I think more political probably than students from the other campuses. Um, but, you know, I think 
what's what's unique about the setup is that you have students who are coming from uh, different college settings who have perhaps different, you know, different values, depending on which college they selected. Um, and they're coming together in the same room uh, and bringing those perspectives, bringing those experiences to each other. I also think in terms of student activism, the consortium really enables students because they can see something, if something happens at one of the colleges, they can use that as leverage to kind of push another college um, in ways that are, are pretty interesting and, and unusual uh, at the undergraduate at the undergraduate level. And I also think, you know, in terms of the resources that it enables for students, there's just no end to events, speakers, um, you know, in terms of the classes that we can offer, um, you know, we could not offer a program of this scale in media studies at a typical liberal arts college because it's the resources needed are too great. But when you bring five colleges together, you can you can do that. So I think, uh, you know, it, it adds, it's only additive to me that we're not part of the five college consortium um, and not in any way, you know, limiting. Actually, I think it really expands what can be done at the colleges. Yeah, I teach in a three college program. So one of the things that I, I think um, folks who, who maybe are familiar with the East Coast consortiums are, uh, think about, differently is that the East Coast consortiums are, the colleges are separated. You take a bus to get between them. We cross the street, right? Like I will teach one class at Scripps, one class at Pitcher, and one class at CMC in the same morning. And my students will then have another class at Pomona, right? And our building sits where the three campuses meet. In any one of my classes, my students are split a third, a third, a third between the three colleges. I. I tend to not see differences between the students when I'm in a larger group. It's as I get to know students more, because I think the way that um, students fit their college's unique personalities are themselves unique, right? I, I will often see a student and think, why did you go to Pitzer? And then after two years of getting to know that student, I'll go, I can't imagine you going anywhere else, right? I'll see exactly why that fits for you. And it's not the stereotypical way, but it's some other way that this place really spoke to you and why this was the right place for you. So, so yeah, it, it tends to be stereotype defying for me because the tendency is they walk in and you, you, you would think that I could pick out the script students and the picture students and the CMC students, but I can't. But once I get to know them, it makes sense. Yeah, and um, and totally agree with what everyone said. Um, I uh, growing up in the neighborhood, we used to call the five C's the Scooby Doo colleges because each college represented a different Scooby Doo character. Yeah, um, but it's funny because now that I've been here for a bit and gotten to know my students in the way in a deeper way than just okay, that's a student in a class. Um, I see that there's a lot of variability in those. So it's, 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 it's more of a larger ensemble cast uh, between the colleges and, and in my classroom. So I teach a lot of neuroscience courses that, yeah, we get a lot of Keck students. So we get a lot of people from Scripps and a lot of people from all over. And um, they definitely, there's definitely a little feel but then you go, oh, wow, you're actually like this part of the spectrum in script students and this. So there's a lot of variability, but it's also kind of fun in my head to go like, oh, here comes another uh, Freddy. Okay. So. Are you Freddy? I thought we were Shaggy. We're Shaggy. Uh, Freddy would be CMC. Um. Well, so as we look forward to reopening plans this fall, as we made the announcement that we're bringing students back and faculty and staff will be heading back maybe this summer, we're not sure yet. Um, but when we do, what place on campus do you miss the most? What is your favorite place on campus? I like the Grove House, it's my favorite place on campus. Campus. Um, well, the Grove House, I, I, I know there was a tour right before this, I caught the tail end of it. The Grove House is uh, 
the kind of it's actually on my I'm actually drinking coffee out of a Pitzer mug today. I'm like extremely on brand. It's actually on my mug. Um, the uh, I love this mug. It's a great shape. Um, the uh, uh, the Grove House is a student run restaurant on campus, um, and it's kind of a community space at the center. It's an old craftsman house, um, and the food is great. It's a little slow. You need time if you want to go to the Grove House, but it's delicious. The tofu sandwich is very nice. Um, and they have beautiful gardens outside. Um, so I like to kind of take my stack of papers and sit there and have lunch and, and read and, um, and, and grade. Um, and you're just out in nature and the chicken coop is nearby and it, it feels very, very idyllic. Um, I do miss that. Did you hear they're adding a camera to the chicken coop? I, I heard a tale that we were getting like a chicken live stream that I can watch. We have also a bobcat that has moved down outside media studies in the pandemic. Uh, the bobcat's a regular. I think the bobcat's going to be very upset when the students are back and it has to find a more, more quiet home elsewhere. <laughs> We've taken video of it. I think I can send it out if people want it. <laughs> The space I'm missing is actually not on Pitzer's campus, but it's on Scripps's campus just nearby, which is the Margaret Fowler Garden. It's this wonderfully secluded space right in the center of campus, but it's a walled garden with this beautiful wisteria tree that has overgrown all of the trellises. It's the space where my spouse and I were married a couple of years ago, and it's just, it's this idyllic oasis of peace in the middle of what is always a busy and bustling campus with students running between classes and um, the, the groundskeeper carts running off to, to fix one more downed tree branch. Um, that just in that, that oasis of calm, you can kind of catch your breath for a moment and uh, center yourself. And that's a garden where they filmed the sanctuary in the movie Bird Box. Right, the mm. last scene where uh, they arrive at the sanctuary in Bird Box, it's on Scripps campus and it's that garden. Sorry, Stephanie, go ahead. Oh, no, no, that's okay. Um, I'm looking forward to the dining hall, not just because of the food, because the food is delicious. I love the, the food at Pitzer, but also um, something that's, again, just so nice about Pitzer being small is that I get to know students uh, not just students, but or staff as well. And so the people who work at the dining hall and at the pit stop are so nice. And sometimes, you know, when it's a busy day and we've got stress, um, it's nice to go over to the dining hall or the pit stop and, and just like say hi to them. You know, the people that work there, they're really great. Um, and it's just a nice little break in the day, like need to get away from the computer. I'm going to go to the dining hall or to the pit stop, get a coffee or get a snack and just say hello to the people who work there. Um, because like I said, Pittsburgh's just a really great community, not just for faculty and student um, interactions, but with staff as well. Yeah, and I, I guess there's two. One's kind of corny. I really miss the mounds. I really miss just sitting there and watching students on the slack line going, oh, wear a helmet, but then they're so talented at it. And I'm just like, oh, and I could just, just sit outside and look at the mountains. And I'm, I just love that. And I really miss that. Um, but it's corny, but I really miss, there's this moment when I, if I choose to drive, a lot of the times I will take, I live in Los Angeles and I'll take the train in. But if I drive in, there's this moment where I'm sitting in my car outside of Scott Hall, the main kind of building. And I just sit there for a second. And maybe it's because I feel like happy with my job, um, but I will just, look at the building and the colors and the the like the desert aesthetic and and i just i miss this moment and i have my coffee and i'm just like okay and i just miss that feel i guess and so yeah we should have these conversations more i love hearing uh what faculty do in their cars before class um when you first arrive to campus uh we're nearing the end of our session our panel here. Do you have any last advice or thoughts for our admitted students um, about teaching or coming to Pitzer? Um, knock on doors. Like faculty, 
we because I think we're built on this uh, this idea of inner the intersections and 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 all of that. We really uh, faculty really like hearing from you and talking to you and getting to know you. And one of the hardest parts of my job right now um, over the last year is like, I, I want someone just to knock on my door and come into my office and just chat with them about whatever, about who won, you know, the soccer match or something like that. Like I miss that. But also I getting to know faculty are going to help you, you know, introduce people to other people. You know, I have a student who's like, I really want to study this. And I was like, you know what, go across my hallway because the person across my hallway studies that and they're really cool. Also mention that you're a Chelsea fan and they'll clap for you. Like it's, you get to know your community and I've never been a part of a workplace. I mean, if we just want to boil it down to that, where the community is so strong and connected and the voices of everyone are heard. Um, so yeah, knock on doors, get to know people. Um, my FYS students, I give them homework that every year they have to meet one new person and have that person know them re reasonably well. And, and so far they're like, hey, I met a new faculty member. I met a new staff and I'm really happy with that interaction. And so, yes, that would be some advice from me. I mean, I would definitely agree with that. I think, you know, approaching faculty, coming to office hours, knocking on doors, that kind of stuff is, is really great. It's faculty are, you know, who teach at liberal arts colleges really like talking to students. They wouldn't be able to do it. They wouldn't be able to work in this context if they didn't. Um, and, uh, you know, sometimes it can be intimidating, but I think that's a really great, um, great thing. Um, and I think, you know, wherever, you know, obviously we hope you'll come to Pitzer, but wherever you end up, I think, you know, the other thing too is to just trust also that, you know, follow your interests. I mean, you know, Nancy was describing earlier, you know, the kind of that trajectory of someone. I'll, I have lots of students come into my office thinking they wanted to, you know, major in econ. And then they realized they took a media studies class and they realized they really love media studies. I think, you know, there's a lot of pressure now to know what you want to do and to make the most of your time. And I think making the most of your time is also about exploring all the possible intellectual things that you can that you can and and really following those threads and following the interests as they emerge and i would encourage you to have a plan but not too much of a plan um and just you know be open and elastic about what what you what you find you love yeah i guess i would st steal a line from from clay shirky which is basically that to get to this point you have had to be almost perfect in every way, right? Get an A in every class, do everything perfectly, do every extracurricular thing, check every box, show no flaws. The next four years are a different experience. This is a time to fail. And I don't mean fail at a college, don't do that. But I mean, try and fail in academic ways, in personal ways, try things that you aren't convinced you're gonna succeed at. Try things that you don't know whether you will like them. Um, explore fields that are further from what you know that you're already good at, because this is a re really unique time and space in your next four years where you get to learn from your quote unquote mistakes, which are really explorations. You might have been trained to think of them as mistakes, but they're really explorations. In a place where you're surrounded by four walls and the world can't see you, and you are surrounded by people who are mentoring you and love you and want to see you succeed and thrive, you will not get another four-year experience like this again. Take advantage of it. Do things for the academic hell of it, and don't be afraid of failing, because we're here to catch you when you fall. It's what this is all about. I 100% agree with everything my colleagues have said. And Pitzer is a great place where there are so many amazing opportunities for both personal and professional growth and take advantage of those. It can be overwhelming. We do tend to have a lot of programming at Pitzer, you know, different events going on. So there is that, but, but 
but really take advantage of that. And like my colleagues were saying, get to know your professors. Um, even if it's someone not in your major, but you really love their class, get to know them. Um, those opportunities are available and they're so unique uh, to, to Pitzer. And fun fact, my sister went to Pitzer um, and she loved it. She had the most amazing experience, still has many friends. And then sometimes I'm at work and I look around and I'm kind of like, I wish I had gone to Pitzer, you know? Um, it's it's a great place to be, it really is. Like I have been unbelievably happy. Um, I know my sister was unbelievably happy and I hope that you will, um, if you come to Pitzer, of course we hope you do have also just the most amazing experience and the one of the greatest times of your life. Thank you all so much for sharing your experience as a Pitzer professor. Um, for our attendees, we are moving on to our next session. The next two session is a virtual lobby with admission staff where you can just come and ask any questions that you have before uh, you make your decision on May 1st. Uh, and then we also have a virtual lobby with the financial aid staff. So if you have any questions, they're able to do one-on-one -on -one meetings with you today um, about um, any questions that you have about your financial aid package. If you want to jump between the two, we are those lobbies are open for an hour. Um, so make sure you click on that last link that I dropped in the chat so you're, you have both links available. Uh, thank you once again to our professors here. Uh, have a great rest of your Saturday and we'll see you all soon.